attention, if you or a loved one has been diagnosed with mesothelioma, you may be entitled to Brown Mamba Show. Brown Mamba Show is a great podcast and will cure your mesothelioma. Just call 1-800-FREAKING-LET'S-START-THIS-PODCAST-TODAY. I think I'd rather have mesothelioma than have to listen to this show, but... Yeah. We are live! <laughs> oh, we'll do it live! We'll do it live! Welcome on into the Brown Mamba Show, episode 7. Uh, I'm your co-host, Casey Brown. Joined, as always, by my co-host, Matt Mamba. Matt, how you doing today, bud? I am alive, and... One That's of my it. nipples is hard. Oh. Only one of them. I don't know why, but okay, it's happening. <laughs> you know, there's. I, I don't know if you said on the podcast once, or it was like a like kind of after show recording or something. But you once said right. that if your obesity doesn't kill you, I will. I don't know what's gonna kill me, but you might be the you might be the cause of that as well. So yeah, I. Uh... Does that make you a serial killer? Because that'd be pretty dope. No, I. Well, uh, it depends how many people have you killed. Ah, oh, man. I can't look to that too much into that. <laughs> All right. Just... So, um, this is our first time back in a while. Um, I think our last podcast, we talked about how good college football is and just how bad not... Matt, Matt is at takes. Um, <gasps> what? Besides that. Oh, I did want to talk. All right. Let's talk okay. about this, Matt. Ooh, Do you okay. have a reasonable... Because I know you mentioned it last last time. Do you have a reasonable uh, take on why college athletes should be paid? Dude, these guys are freaking risking their bodies. Okay. Making heck of money for these universities. Sure. They should, okay. Let's, let's not say they should get paid for playing football, right? But the NCAA is restricting them from making any kind of money outside of football as well. So, like, they can't have sponsorships or brand deals i think that should be a thing i think they should be able to have like side jobs like there's this one dude for lsu that was like crocheting items and selling them to people on campus and he got in trouble for that i think the ncaa just was like all right you should only be worried about college football and uh you shouldn't have to worry about money anywhere else all right so if you don't want to give them money for playing the game of football at least give them opportunities to make money outside of the football field Okay, that's actually a very reasonable take. I thought you were going to go with the take oh. of of that they should be paid by the schools because I think I think what people kind of overlook when people say that they should be paid by the schools is how is it even feasible for these schools to do it? It's obviously going to give an upper hand to those schools that uh, are big time programs. Like I don't think people realize. Okay, so Ohio State's football program and basketball program pay for every single other athletic sport that is part of their programs. That's just how much money they make. So should NFL mm-hmm. play or should their players be getting paid just because they make all that money? I don't think so because suddenly baseball players have to be paid. Uh, Ohio State's women hockey team has to be paid. Their rifle team needs to be paid. Suddenly, all these athletes need to be paid based off of what little to no revenue uh, that school makes off of that uh, off of that sport, and then there's also teams like um, uh, what team just I th- well, I want to say it was FAU that a few years ago their entire football cro- program was completely disbanded because they just didn't have the money for it. Okay, well now if now if you want these programs to pay these players, what money are they going to pay them with? They're just going to rather disband the program, and now you don't have a program at all, making the school money or right. allowing kids to play. <clears throat> so I think people kind of look over that. And then there's also all the D2 and D3 schools, which suddenly they have no, they, they barely have any money whatsoever. They might not even uh-huh. be able to give out scholarships. They have barely any money whatsoever. Right. Are they suddenly going to be able to have to pay their players too? I think people really overlook, like, oh, yeah, Ohio, Urban Meyer makes $5 million for coaching for Ohio State or whatever. Uh, Jim Harbaugh makes like six million, so does Saban or whatever. Like all these guys make a lot of money, sure. But um, one, they make a lot. Urban of money. Meyer's not the coach anymore. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, but, but I got you. I got you. You got what I'm saying. Suddenly, all these guys, uh, they're not gonna, they're not gonna start coaching for less money. Uh, when people say, right. well, we should stop paying all these coaches less, uh, that's just not gonna happen. Good luck finding a good coach. Uh, for a much cheaper pay, these guys make a lot of money for the boosters or from boosters because boosters see, all right, you brought this big time coach in. Let's give this, let's give this uh, university and this this athletic program much more money. I, I think when people go to the, oh well, we pay all these coaches so much, there's a reason for that. One, there's a market for it, 
and it'll take at least 20 years for that market to kind of finally go down to the level that people want just based off of how long coaches coach and like kind of the market that's still around them and everything. And right. I, it, it goes all into boosters. So I, I think people who say the school should be paying them money, I don't think that's the case at all. I think that's going to be very detrimental to a lot of athletic programs. So All right, so you shed some more light on this topic than I knew, but I, I'm still – I think, you know, they should NCAA should let these players make money outside of the sports. Like, let's yeah. say they bring back NCAA football. Freaking have EA Sports pay them to have their name in the video game, right? You can have them sign autographs. You can have them sign memorabilia. You can have them freaking uh, run ads for companies and for ESPN and stuff like that. They should be able to do that kind of stuff to make money. I have zero, right? pro- I have zero problem with that whatsoever. Um, I think when it comes to... kind of solve the problem with, like these are the big time players that are like making all the money for the universities and you're not paying uh, the athletes that are already getting like big scholarships and saving a lot of money on college. And you're still paying the people that are making you a lot of money. Right. Right. And like, and, and, and that's, that's another thing I want to talk about is like people always point to like the walk-ons like, Oh yeah, this guy's a walk-on. Not only does he not get a scholarship or anything like that, you know, he, he's still doing all this football and you know, how is he going to, how is he going to pay for college and do all of this when he doesn't work? <laughs> That's his choice. I, I really hate to say right. that sometimes because it sounds like so privileged or just so like not understanding, but that is his choice to be a walk-on on a Division One team. I'm sure if he was going for like a smaller Division One team or a Division Two, he would at least get some sort of money towards his football if he's a walk-on on a D1 team. I, I, I right. that that is that player's choice. And I, I don't I don't think that's like an unreasonable take at all to just think like yeah, this guy is not getting any money for school. He has a potential to get money for school if he plays well, but it's his choice. Like I, I don't know what to tell you besides that. So, and usually the people that are walk-ons aren't really the like hardest up for money, and it's like going to be a struggle for them to even stay in college. Mm-hmm. Like Baker Mayfield was a walk-on, uh, J.J. Watt was a walk-on, I believe. Like, I'm pretty sure these families weren't hard up for freaking money and they were able to get financial aid and stay in school. Yeah, especially Baker. From what I've seen from Baker, he comes from a decent decent background. So, mm-hmm. but, like, yeah. but I, I just think that people just don't take in consideration of, you know, the, the school's funding and that you're not just paying the football players suddenly. You're paying the softball players, you're paying the tennis players, you're paying the swim team, you're paying the volleyball team. So the dodgeball uh, team, the dodgeball team, <laughs> uh, just kidding. We're a club. Um, oh, oh. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I just think that people aren't very understanding. And then I, I think you're right. Uh, so the only problem I see with, uh, the NCAA football games, um, is some players may want more than what they think they're worth. So if that's the case, then just add, you know, random AI that, uh, you That's know. the thing for pro players too. Like, wasn't Barry Bonds always excluded yeah. from? Yeah, Barry the Bonds show was. Um, oh, what was Barry Bonds' alter ego in the old, uh, in like the old Slugfest games and MLB the shows? Hold on, Barry. Uh, Same with like Bill Belichick was. As yeah, never Bill in Belichick's Madden. still not in the Madden. He was like in the old Maddens when he was still with the Browns, I think. Um, mm-hmm. But, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I I I, I think people do. I think there's going to be some kids that overvalue themselves, but just just add, you know, just just add in random right. players or whatever. So, John Dowd, John Dowd was a left hitting, literally the <laughs> greatest like left hitting white guy. Of course, I'm pretty sure he was white, um, but uh, but yeah, I, yeah. Oh, that just that just brought back some memories. Um, <laughs> MLB or MLB MVP 2005 or baseball MVP 2005 was such a good game. I missed that game. Oh, for I actually have it for my PlayStation 2. That's right there. But I need to I, I need to hop on to that sometime. All right. So, um, but yeah, we can move into some NFL talk. Um, I think last time we good talked news. about the NFL, what happened? Um, everybody was about to. Do? Yeah. So everybody's about to put Lamar Jackson in Canton. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Dak Prescott was being named the next Tom Brady. Uh, what? What else? Yeah. What else happened? 
So the Browns were a bust already. The Browns have are, are worse than the 0 16 team uh, team that uh, that that just took the field a few years ago. So uh, going into it, let's just pull up the NFL standings right now because I'm not prepared for this whatsoever, and that's the type of professionalism you get from the show. Uh, Patriots still Patriots are still 4 0, even though they they that that them and the Bills just played a really I'm not going to call it a good game. game. It was a close, it was a close game. game. The Bill, Bills defense is legit. I yeah, I, I thought they were going to struggle a little bit against Brady, but that that defense is legit. And they shut him down. Yeah, they they really did. And like, I mean, if the Bills have Josh Allen for that whole game, he had a rough game like going into it. But I think if they still have Josh Allen, that uh, they might win that game instead of Matt Barkley. Was that was yeah, that? Matt Barkley? Yeah, uh, he actually looked decent, but then he had that turnover from the tipped pass. I think. Oh yeah, that's right. But yeah, no, I, Bill's defense is legit, and oh, yeah. man, I don't know. I the Patriots, they're so good, but and I I, I just can't say that the Bills are going to give them a run for the division, but they might. No, I, no. I, I, it all depends on one if Josh Allen can play and two how well he plays. Uh, they don't have the firepower, even though Frank Gore is ageless. They don't have the firepower on offense. Yeah, I think you're. I mean, like John Brown and Cole Beasley are your are your receivers. Uh, their tight ends are Those really. Are two- those are two number two or three receivers you got right there. Yeah, I mean they they, they do fit that like kind of style that they want with Josh Allen and everything. Kind of like you know Cole Beasley kind of opens up that um, mid mid game over the middle, and John Brown's just a burner. But I don't know. I, I I think you're right. They don't have enough firepower. If they make a run for the wild card, um, I still think they're. I def- can see that. I, I think their defense is good enough just on that to make a run for the wild card, and that the Bills' offense just has to be serviceable. Um, but yeah, the pa- Patriots' offense looked horrible. Uh, I mean, you can't say that their defense looked great because once again they were facing Matt Barkley. But like, their I mean, their defense, their defense, uh, they're not the best defense in the league, but they might be the most. Uh, they're the best overall defense, but I don't think they're the most like. The Patriots. Yeah. Besides maybe the Bears. Team. I'd probably say the Bears are still the best defense in the league. Yeah, okay, I could see that. Um, I just think, like, the ba- the Patriots' defense isn't going to, like, overwhelm you, but they're not going to give up unnecessary points. Right. So I think yeah. they're kind of the most sounded. Um, mm-hmm. Moving to the AFC West, the Chiefs, uh, who do they face? They faced, since then, they, the faced, Lions. they faced the they playoff the Lions. Lions. Uh, Shut up! <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Tell me, the Lions have, have the Lions not looked any different this year? Have the Lions not surprised you at all with how well they've played? They're a solid team, but they're not – no, they're not – it's too early. I'll give you maybe they're a wild card team, all right? But if you think they're gonna, they're, they're better than the Packers, you're on crap. Okay, so, I did, I, so I've been just saying this just to mess with you. I, don't, I, I said from the beginning I don't think the Packers – or the I'm sorry, the Lions are going to make the playoffs. I just said they're going 10-6. and six. And I'm, feel, I'm still feeling – I'm still feeling really good about that pick. Uh – Hey, oh, they're gonna finish eight and eight. All right, eight and eight. All right. Well, whatever. It's better than you having the Falcons go thirteen and three. Or listen, <laughs> listen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I would like to take this moment to apologize. I thought the Falcons' defense improved over the off season. I was sorely mistaken. I thought Matt Ryan was still gonna be solid with all the weapons he has. I apologize. Matt Ryan's mediocre. This defense is still awful. They're ruining Julio Jones's career. Along with Calvin Ridley's young career, I'm sorry the Falcons suck. I'm I'm so mad about that because like I, so I've always been a Matt Ryan. I haven't been a hater, but I've been a very big doubter of his. And uh, and I was like, all right, you know what? I, I'm down for Matt Ryan this year. I'm going to trade for him in fantasy and everything. I think he's going to do good. <laughs> Dude, come on! No. He's been so yeah. mediocre. Like he, he's and, so many weapons. Yes. Yes, I, you have you have arguably the best wide receiver. I think DeAndre Hopkins still takes it, but Julio Jones, out of any day of the week, could always be number one receiver in the league. And uh-huh. and you also have you know Sanu. You still have Calvin really on the other side. Devontae Freeman is no scrub. Uh, Austin Hooper's a great tight end. Austin Hooper's a great tight end. Like, how does that defense or how does that offense not produce? I get that their defense. Um, I forget. Uh, there's, I want to say their safety or cornerback just went down again. 
who he yeah. went down last year too. He's a big part of it. I want to say like Keanu Neal. Does that sound right? Yeah. 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 Keanu Neal. Yeah. He he just went down. I get it. that's a big part of your defense, but that shouldn't be the they reason why. Before that. That shouldn't be the reason why your offense sucks. Right. That, I really believed in the Falcons this year, man. I, I thought did they were going to bounce back from all those injuries they had last year. Yeah. I thought they were going to bounce back. I did, I mean, too. it's still early. Right. It's still early, but it's not a good start. All right. No, look, they're they're one and three. They're last in their division. All right, so in order for my prediction to be right, they need to win 12 straight <laughs> they games. Know 12 straight. <laughs> what? <laughs> they just need to run the table. I. Oh, and, I mean, like – I mean that division isn't good, so they could make a run. They're obviously not going to go. They're not going to win twelve straight. They can make a run, but I mean Teddy Bridgewater's looked okay. He hasn't looked anything phenomenal. If anything, that Saints defense has looked better since Drew Brees left. Um, yeah. The Buccaneers have been playing okay. Uh, like I don't know. Give Jameis a little more time. Yeah, I'm still I, not sold. On I'm James still not is sold bad. on Jameis, but I'm still not counting him out. Cam Newton, right. Cam Newton uh, is down for the Earth. Panthers, and uh, Kyle Allen looked okay, but like he didn't look anything special. Like that offense is solely relying on Christian McCaffrey, and there's only mm-hmm. just so much you can do before they start just putting like eight or nine guys in the box and trying to just shut down Christian McCaffrey no matter what. Which I mean, that's right. still hard to do, but but that division is. It's still wide open, but the Falcons are just doing their best to make sure that they get no chance whatsoever. They, besides, so yeah, besides the red... At one point was, like, one of the best. Besides the... Oh, my God. Okay, so... Wow, that's bad. So, I was just... I, there's, they're second in the NFC, uh, right behind the... Oh, wait, never mind. Wow, the Bears' offense has been bad, too. All right, so they're third of the NFC um, behind the uh, Redskins and Bears for least points allowed or or least points scored. Wait. Yeah. So they're, they, they've they scored the third least points. And with all of those weapons, like, how does that happen? The Bears, that is... the, Bears what? Have, the Bears have scored 66 points. And... There's three and one, and they play in a legitimately good division. The Redskins are 0 and 4, but that They're offense trash. that offense is not good whatsoever. No. The Falcons have all those weapons. The Falcons are, without a doubt, a better offense than the Bears and the Redskins by far. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they're just right on par with them. Like, how does that happen? <laughs> they gotta fire Dan Quinn at this point, because yeah, I free. agree. I, I completely agree. Like I don't know what else is gonna what else is gonna change besides that guy being gone. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. Sorry about that ranting. All right, Matt. Talk about your Packers a little bit. Uh, they had a little bit of a dis- right. they disappointing game against the Eagles. Why aren't we running the ball? Holy freak! You can't count on Aaron Jones to get one yard. And to all the people yelling at Aaron Rodgers for that throw, that was not Aaron's fault. That was a freaking perfect throw right into uh. What was his name? Was it MVS? I think it was Marcus Valdez Scantling. He should have caught it. And I get it. If he would have waited two more seconds, a guy was wide open over there. But the play call was a freaking quick slant. Hit it in MVS's hands and hit him right there. Unfortunate bounce off the shoulder pads picked off. That's not on Aaron Rodgers, all right? Oh, it was on the coach for even freaking not calling a running play. Aaron Rodgers did his job. I, we should have won that game, all right? And Aaron Devontae Jones- Adams was hurt. Aaron Jones has been, like, a legitimate top five running back this season. Yeah, he's solid. I, don't, I, don't, I know he was struggling that game because of the Eagles' defense, but it's second down. You got three chances to get one yard. You're telling me you don't get at least one running play? Like, ah, and like, I'm that's, so confused. And, like, so I'm, I'm okay with passing – on the goal line or like close to the goal line once or twice. Not on second not on second and goal. Not on second and goal. I think for the most part, Fourth like down. when we look at this may just be me um watching the Browns defenses for the past how many years because just mm-hmm. I've seen so many teams score in the red zone against them and I've never seen the Browns offense in the red zone besides like these past two off uh past two uh years. So it may just be me, but I feel like passing in the red zone for the most part, there's usually a guy just wide open that it's just so chaotic in that end zone that 
usually there's a guy at wide open. It's usually a tight end or something, or it's just like a little yeah. rollout to the side, which I still hate that play. I think that's a very low, uh, a, a very low. You're inefic- taking away half the field. Exactly. On an already small freaking field. <laughs> exactly. But I'm okay with passing on the end, uh, on the, on the, on the goal line. But dude, you got to at least run it twice. At least. Yeah, especially when the Packers' offensive line, Brian Bulaga, got hurt, and he was out for the rest of that game. So Rodgers had no time to freaking throw the ball. So freaking run the ball. Oh, my God. And, and, uh, Jimmy Graham had a couple uh, dropped passes in the end zone, too. Yeah, and if you run it twice and it looks and it looks close, run it again. If you run it twice and it's obvious that that D-line just completely obliterates your O-line just on, like, a run right. play, okay, pass it. That's fine. But dude, run it at least twice. It, 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 the same thing with like, and the, it was first. It was first and goal, and Aaron Jones picked up three yards to get him on the one. And then they're like, "All right, thanks, Aaron. I think we're gonna pass it now." What? And that's just, that's the same thing with with the Browns and the Rams. Uh, you know, was it two weeks ago? Last week? Yeah, it, it was two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago. Um, it, it, you have Nick Chubb who. Once uh, yeah. he's also been a top five running back this season with oh, yeah. with the limited amount of volume that he's gotten, and a, you just don't run. how I don't, how I remember, watch, I remember watching the Rams game and I'm like they're not running it you you still have Nick Chubb right because I was wondering if he was hurt or something and then, but it, no like not the ball and if they don't get in those two tries you know what they also didn't do on the goal line. And I know we're talking about like past games and everything, but they didn't even target OBJ. They didn't even target their most uh, like effective weapon I, I, I'm in the red zone. But I, I just don't understand that this NFL mindset, and it all started with Pete Carroll and and the Seahawks in the, in the Super Bowl of passing on the goal line, it, like a time after time again. The definition of insanity is trying something over and over again, and expecting a different result. It, it all these coaches are insane. I, I don't know what they see or like. Nah, nah we're we're gonna we're gonna do it. It's like no, just freaking run the ball, bro. Literally, if you can't pick up one yard, you don't deserve to win the game. Okay. I I don't understand why they don't just put like a second string tackle or guard in as their fullback and just have one more yeah. big body just kind of push that pile. You don't need a hole. You just need literally your body to just kind of fall over into the end zone. The entire the entire pile just fall into the end zone. You don't That's even need you your need. body. You just need. You just need to stretch your arm it's, to get the ball over the goal line. Exactly. <laughs> and say they're I passing know. it for five yards back. I don't understand I don't it. Uh, all right. I, well. I get Aaron Rodgers is, is one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, and I love my boy Aaron Rodgers. You still got to run the ball. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. Um, besides, no, that, <laughs> besides that, uh, the AFC South is 2-2, two and two, just the entire AFC South. Um, I I don't know what to make of that division once again. Um, it's, it's a mystery because like, but Mariota has been he's the most inconsistent quarterback in the NFL. I'll yeah. say it. I don't. Yeah, yeah, he goes eighteen for twenty seven for two hundred twenty seven yards and three touchdowns against the Falcons. What do you do against the Jaguars? He goes twenty three for forty for three oh four. What do you do against? <laughs> The Colts, he goes 146, three touchdowns, one inter- – oh, that's Jacoby Versailles, I'm sorry. He goes 19 for 28, 154 yards, and one touchdown. Yeah. And then he lights up the Browns. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. What does he do against the Browns? He goes 14 for 24, 248 yards, and three touchdowns. Like, dude, this is your contract year. And I get it. This has kind of always been Mariota's kind of – thing is he's been just so inconsistent like when he's on he's a decently good quarterback when he's off he's he's a backup right i i don't know i don't know what to think of that the think of that division i think garter Minshew is another fitz magic i i this he's gonna flame out soon i don't i don't have any stock in him whatsoever uh and everyone's like overhyping like oh Minshew mania i I don't see that many people freaking about out about this guy like he's more of a joke like oh he's gonna be the next tom brady when like no one really thinks that. No, I don't think anybody thinks that, but I think people are thinking he's going to be a legitimate quarterback. I don't know if he's ever going to be a legitimate quarterback. I could see him being a game manager starting quarterback sometime. Yeah, that's I, that's I kind of him, what he's been. But I see him having a spot in the NFL for like five years. 
like I see occasionally his... starting being a backup most of the time. But if I... you're like going to rely on this guy, I can't see it from I... what I've seen of him. I see his upside being like a uh, Alex Smith, but probably not as good. Um, I, yeah. I would say, yeah, yeah, probably an Alex Smith. But dude, I'm just not putting my stock in him yet. Uh, but like this division, you got Jacoby Brissett, who's played okay for the most wow. part. Yeah, like he's yeah. been he's been much better than people thought he's he was going to be. The best out of all the quarterbacks in that division. Uh, yeah, I mean, 65 completion percentage, 911 yards, 10 touchdowns, two interceptions. He's just mm-hmm. doing enough so the Colts don't lose. And I mean, that Colts defense is pretty solid. Uh, I think didn't they lose? Um, who did they lose? Did they lo- they lost uh, Malik Hooker, right? Did they? I think so. Um, Dang, they lost last year too. Yeah, exactly. That's so that's a that's a big loss. Um, okay, so he's not out long, but uh, mm. but but yeah, I mean, Colts have been okay. I mean, they faced who they faced. They faced the they lost to the Raiders, which is never a good sign. Oh. They beat the Chargers and t- uh, the uh, Titans and Falcons and lost to the Chargers. Like, ah. they I mean, played those a- are all solid teams. With the exception of maybe the Raiders, but the Raiders are two and two. I don't understand that. Raiders are are a decent team. I mean, they're a, a below tier team. They're not tanking for Tua, but they're not a playoff contender. All right, they're kind of in the middle. Yeah, I mean, they beat the Broncos and the Colts, and they've lost to the Chiefs and the Vikings. Oh, you lost to Kirk Cousins. Yikes. Yeah, that's a rough one. Kirk Cousins is another one we need to talk about because, my God, like. Oh, that's great. You're making your mo- one of your most ta- – probably your most talented wide receiver. You could say Thielen, but you're you're making your most talented wide receiver and Stefan Diggs want to trade when that offense is awesome. That, Thielen, it should be. You have Calvin Cook, Adam Thielen, Stefan Diggs. Oh, and uh, who's their tight end? Kyle Rudolph, right? Kyle Rudolph's no slouch. And, it's all right. That's an awesome offense, and Stefan Diggs wants to be traded from it because of how bad Kirk Cousins is. Let me let me I get up. It. Let me get up Kirk Cousins' stats here. Kirk Cousins, uh, according to Pro Football Reference, is 64% completion rating, seven, uh, 735 yards, uh, three touchdowns, and two interceptions. Three touchdowns in four weeks. <laughs> And, like, part of that I get because Dalvin Cook has just been uh, an absolute workhorse. But, dude, okay. three touchdowns with that with that receiving core. Come on. Oh, it's beautiful. Hey, hey, how much, how much guaranteed money so did he get? Money. Oh, he's got a lot of money. Oh, th- thank you for that. Thank you for that uh, dynamite drop in there, Matt. How much, how much was that guaranteed, guaranteed contract? <laughs> Kirk Cousins guaranteed contract. Eighty-four million dollars. Eighty-four million dollars for your, for your quarterback to throw three uh, touchdowns, three uh, touchdowns in four games. That's unbelievable. And like, I don't think uh, anybody yeah. thought Kirk was going to be as bad as this. I didn't. I thought he was always, back, but I, I mean, he's disappointed in his play. I'll tell you that much. As as a Packers fan, this is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Um, besides that, he was bad, but, Trubisky's out now, isn't he? In no time. Shoulder. He, he shouldn't be out too long. Gotcha. Um, un- what else? The NFC West has been slightly weird. Uh, the 49ers have played really well. The Seahawks have played so much better than what I thought they would. 49ers. Uh, the Rams have played. The Rams have played very disappointing, disappointing football. I mean, how do you lose to the Buccaneers fifty-five to forty with that, with that, with that defense? How does that happen? Oh boy, Matt's been cutting out again. Here we. This I'm is the, cutting out. This is this is the this is the part of the episode where it derails. Which actually, I thought that was about I don't know twenty minutes ago. Anyways. Um, Back. Rams suck. The Rams do suck. And, like, I feel like the Seahawks just aren't this good. I'm not really buying into them either. And, and, like, their offense has been fine. Tyler Lockett and Russell Wilson is is an awesome offense. Like, Chris Carson's been okay. Um, Will Dizzy's suddenly emerged as a solid tight end for them. 
but look, these are the point totals they've given up: twenty-nine to the Rams, twenty or thirty-three to the Saints, ten to the Cardinals. Okay, that's fine. Twenty-six to the Steelers without Ben Roethlisberger or James Conner, and twenty to the Bengals. Right. Uh, that def- that Bengals? yeah, that 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 defense is slowly falling apart, and it's it's a matter of no time before that offense just can't keep up with them. And I, I feel like that's going to be starting soon. And but man, I, I I had them going six and ten, and that has that has me them losing what they're four and one right now. So I don't know how to do math. Uh, it's ten and nine. Ten and nine. Holy <laughs> frick! I'm bad. Right. I have them going two and four two, and one. two and nine the rest of the way. That's what I meant. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, let's see. 10 plus 4, carry the 1, and I think we got it. Um, and, you know, the same thing, goes for the, same thing goes for the Niners as well. They haven't had a very, deciding, uh, a very decisive win for me. They've beat the Buccaneers, they've beat the Bengals, and they've beat the Steelers. Whoopee. You faced, you now, fa- I got the Browns killing the 49ers. I do, Monday too. Night. I don't see how people aren't picking the 49ers, or aren't picking the Browns here. The Browns finally look like they have their offense back together. The Browns' defense is so much better than the Niners' offense that I, I don't see how that doesn't. And I, th- I think the Niners' defense is slightly overrated, especially when your best cornerback is Richard Sherman. I mean, oh, oh. Richard Sherman's the most overrated cornerback of all time. I'm not afraid to say it, but of all time, yes. You, I, Norman? Okay, Josh Norman is pretty overrated. However, Richard Sermon got all of this hype, yet I, I can't stand when people talk about how good a corner is when he only plays one side of the field and plays mostly zone. How, I, 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 you can't call a corner good when he doesn't do his job and guard the best receiver. When, when you had Darrell Revis, Darrell Revis was following your best receiver, and there was about half of the field you couldn't throw to. It was whatever side Darrell Revis was on. Richard Sherman's like, all right, there's about 10%. If, if, this, if this is the entire field right here, and this is where your offensive line is, and this is where Richard Sherman is, there's about like a little bit like right here where you just can't throw to. Oh, man, I'm the best corner in the game. And Crabtree talks crap. Get out of here. I, <sighs> Michael Crabtree, I'll give him that. He did shut down Michael Crabtree, but Michael Crabtree sucks. So, uh you, you cut out there. What was that? I, I feel like you're defending Michael Crabtree. Tree's not awful. All right. Michael Crabtree sucks. Sucks? He Listen, sucks. he was hyped. He was super hyped up coming into the NFL. But I mean he had a solid career. He had like he's got like what, like career yards? That's not terrible. Uh Michael Crabtree. He has stone hands. That's his problem. He's always been a solid route runner, but he has stone hands. Um Seven seven thousand four hundred and ninety nine yards, fifty four touchdowns. That's not too bad. For yeah. for what? Eleven years in the NFL? Okay. That's for not great. Alex, oh Flacco, freaking who else was his quarterback? Flacco, Lamar Jackson, um who do we have here? who do you play for? San Francisco, so what was that? Out that was Alex Smith then? Kaepernick too, probably. Kaepernick. Uh, Oakland, so he had Derek Carr as his quarterback. Ooh, Jesus Christ, he's played some bad quarterbacks. Um, oh, he's elite. Joe Flacco's elite. Stop. Uh, <laughs> Joe Flacco isn't elite. Joe Flacco is the most elite. I think that's where your problem is. Yeah. Um, bes- besides that, I I don't really know about any other NFL teams to talk about. Like the AFC North it finally looks like the Browns are going to take over, especially with the Steelers being so bad and the Ravens kind of looking the way they did against the Browns. I mean, I'm I'm still not dis- discounting the Ravens, but my god, that defense is bad for them. Uh-huh. And it's only going to be a matter of time until Lamar Jackson falls back completely to grace like he did against the Browns and like he did against the uh the Chiefs. So, I think I still think they're probably like an eight and eight. Solid? I wouldn't count Lamar Jackson out completely. And I, I think he's still going to continue to grow and be a good quarterback. I, and I, I'm not discounting that, but he's not a good quarterback right now. And he's very limited in what he can do. So, 
but I still think they're an eight and eight team. Uh, the Bengals are tanking for Tua. The Steelers look horrible. Gonna stick with Andy Dalton. <laughs> the Bengals are gonna We're get the, <laughs> Bengals are gonna get the first overall pick. If we can get the defensive I, line, I I want to say what week is it? It is week sixteen. The Dolphins and the Bengals play each other. If we can get an zero and fourteen and an zero and fourteen playing each other for Tua, that amazing that is going to be incredible. I can't wait for that. Uh, be Josh Rosen. They'll probably throw Fitzpatrick back in there because they're trying to lose. Josh Rosen looks so good. And Solid. He, he's looked so oh, much better bad. than than what he should with that offense. And I feel so bad for him. I I think Dallas might trade for him in the offseason. Dude, no. They do not hate Dak Prescott that much. They're not going to give Dak up. Prescott $40 million, especially when Dak's starting to fall back to grace, too. Eh. Let, Packers. Let, let's look at Dak stats. Oh, that's gonna be that's gonna be our new segment is Dak stats, where we talk about just how mediocre his stats are, and how he's not worth forty million dollars. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Two thousand nineteen, seventy-two percent completion rating. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Who has he played against other ex- than the Saints? Exactly, exactly. Uh, and the one d- good defense he faces, he goes two hundred twenty-three yards. Most of that was garbage time. Um, one interception, no touchdowns, uh, completion rating of 66, 66%. Yeah, exactly. I, not like 70 yards on the final. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater was out, out throwing him until I think that final drive. <laughs> yes, but I'm sorry that Dak, Pres- Dak Prescott's the right. best quarterback of all time through these first four weeks when he faced Miami, Washington, and the New York Giants. Dude, I, I'm, the I'm, Packers I'm, freaking embarrassed Dak, man. I can't wait. Oh, what, they they face each other this year. Yeah, it's oh, this week they're going. Oh, they're going to murder Dak Prescott because that line uh, that line has been okay for the Cowboys, but it's been not as good as what it should be. Zeke Zeke has not been producing whatsoever. The the back the running defense better chill out though because I feel like Zeke is gonna go off against this Packers running defense. I hope so because I traded for Zeke in fantasy. Boy, has he not he's he has not produced whatsoever. So that sucked. Packers Packers need to just stack the box. They have a good enough secondary where they can just completely eliminate Dak Prescott's uh, lack of throwing game completely. And it, that's gonna be that's gonna be a I, I'm gonna go Packers thirty five. Cowboys six. <laughs> Love to see it. I got like Packers. Let's say it's probably not playing. Oh, Devontae Evans. Go Packers. Probably. Say twenty four Packers. I'll give the Cowboys thirteen. Okay, I'll go twenty seven Packers. Cowboys. Cowboys nine. Since Devontae Adams isn't playing. Give the Cowboys a single touchdown. I don't give the Cowboys a single touchdown. I think that Packers defense is just so good that a little vulnerable against the Eagles, though. So I'm a little scared. Well, yeah, Carson Wentz has also looked like he's finally returned to who his uh, to his top tier quarterback. Oh, because What's that? Jordan, they had to worry about Jordan Howard running the ball and Carson Wentz throwing the ball. You go against the Cowboys, shut Zeke down. Exactly. I'm pretty sure you can contain Dak. So. Yeah. I mean, that's that's actually one other guy, and I don't know if you want to talk anything else about NFL, but Carson Wentz has looked really good, especially without having Alshon Jeffery. Um, he hasn't had d and uh, that offense has been kind of put together like with Lego pieces of Na- Na- Nelson Aguilar and uh, uh, Shady Mc- or uh, not McCoy. I'm sorry, um, uh, Jordan Howard and uh, what's the uh, what Miles Sanders? They. I, He's looked really good, and, um, and and I'm just glad that the the Browns finally have their quarterback, so I don't have to listen to ten hours of of Cleveland sports talk talking about how we passed up on Carson once again. Um, I'm still not completely so, I'm still not completely sold on Carson once, but I think he is a legitimately very good quarterback. So, this to you, Skip Bayless. You were you were on your show talking about pro football focus about how 
the Dallas Cowboys were projected to make it to the Super Bowl. And he's like, oh, I guess Dak isn't overrated. But the same pro football focus website that also says Carson Wentz has been the best quarterback, even though you've been doing nothing but hating Carson Wentz. Shut the heck up, Skip Bayless. I freaking hate you so much. So that's one thing. I oh, That's one thing about pro football focus. I yeah. am all about Don't anal- take it. I'm all about oh, analytics. Hard, bro. I'm all about analytics in yeah. in, in sports. I, I he, it, I'm obviously huge when it comes to baseball and, and everything. Yeah, dude. I don't know. I feel like some of these pro football focus grades sometimes are just like how they're stupid. How? And I hate when people cherry pick the ones they like and then they're just going to completely ignore the other ones. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I, so I, I think out of all of the analytics, pro football focus is definitely the one that needs to be taken with the most grain of salt. Because I've just watched some, like, garbage performances over the year. Pro football focus. Like, actually, well, this guy was one of the pre- top performers on his team. And you're just like, there's no way. There's no Tim way. Tim Tebow, prime example. Uh, what's, the, uh, what's the Browns quarterback that I used that I used to hate that plays for the Packers? Uh, Terrence Williams. Or, no. Uh, uh, Tremont Williams? Tremont Williams. Tremont Williams. Tremont Williams had one of the highest PFF grades uh, for the Browns during that year. And he was garbage. He was horrible. I, I just still on the Packers. I don't know. I don't. He's, he's played okay this year. He knows his role. He's just the kind of the veteran leader that's in like thirty percent of the snaps. So yeah, that's a better role for him at this point in his career. He used to be a beast. All right, just take my word on it. He used to be a beast before he freaking left the Packers. All right, let's move into. Uh, I don't know if you have anything else you want to talk about NFL wise. Ah, man, I'm good. All right, let's quickly move into the MLB playoffs. Um, the Indians have, for the third year in a row, just really turned me off to baseball um, just because of how, how depressing they are at as being a complete organization when it comes uh, to their front office ownership and uh, management. Um, so, Hopefully. you know, uh, can't, can't wait for the day Terry Francona and his coaching staff finally gets out of here. But... Uh, <laughs> Not next year. It's not next year. <laughs> All right. Um, so the Twins face the Yankees. Um, the Twins are a prime example of why when I hear a bunch of Indians fans this year make excuses of, oh, but everybody was injured. I'm pretty sure the Yankees had the most uh, people on a DL in a single season. It may have been that or, like, the uh, Dodgers from a few years ago. But the Yankees had, like, like a roster and a half on the DL this year. The Yankees have been injured, and they are uh, how many how many wins how many wins did the Yankees get this year? Did they get a hundred? The New York Yankees, with how many injuries they had, and a very good division that they play in, with the Red Sox playing mediocre baseball, but still a very good team for the most part, yeah. and the Tampa Bay Rays being a very very good team. The New York Yankees. And the Blue won, Jays aren't awful. The Blue Jays aren't awful. The New York Yankees won 103 games. Yeah. With all of the injuries they have. So I mean, you can you can say like, oh, the Yankees got all this money though, but a lot of young, cheap talent stepped up. It's been for this it, team. it legitimately has been the Yankees. The Yankees have always been talked about as, oh yeah, they have all this money. Okay, that money goes really Dude, well. Your to, audio cut out. I can't hear a word you're saying. Can you hear me now? I can't hear you. <laughs> oh boy. Um. Well, I hope. I hope. Oh well, it, shoot! It says you OBS, can hear me, right? Yeah. It says OBS can still. Okay, I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, well I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna talk and uh, hopefully it cuts back. Okay, in. you're good. Okay, you're good. All right. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the people always talk about how the Yankees have all of this money to spend. Yeah, that really helps when you take on a contract like Giancarlo Stanton. But Giancarlo Stanton has been hurt most of the season. Most of this Yankees right. talent has been homegrown, or it's been, excuse me, it's been re- uh, acquired in trades. When they went through that mini rebuild in like 2000, like 15, 16, 17, um, it, it, it's been most of that talent that has really produced for them. And sure, some of that's been like free agent signs and like um, like mid tier guys that have trade deadlines, but none of that includes money. Not, uh, most of that does not right. include money. Like Gio Urshela. Uh, oh yeah. 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 Good job, Terry Francona, on that one. Uh, <laughs> I, I he he's done he's done pretty solid for the Yankees. He was a he was a free agent. Uh, uh, Cameron Mabin, good job, uh, Indians front office on that one. Um, uh. Yeah, yeah, it hurts. It legitimately hurts. But most of this has been solid flyers on guys who have 
obviously shown that they can produce, but just have never been get a ch- given a chance like Gio Urshela, or it, it's been homegrown talent. And the Yankees are a prime example of that. It, it's not about how much money they can spend. They're, they're just a really good rant team. Um, Aaron Boone is an, is an okay manager. Uh, Brian Cashman is one of the best GMs in baseball uh, over and over again. But, man, that just makes me mad. Uh, the Minnesota Twins. I don't know if their pitching is going to be good enough, though. Do you think uh, the Yankees pitching is going to be good enough? So that's the thing. They're facing the Twins, and the Twins pitching is not going to be able to hold up either. So I really do expect this right. I expect this series to be a, a, be a slugfest. Yeah. But – it, so when that happens, I, I bet like these next three games are gonna be like two and zero Twins, one and zero Yankees. Just that's how base <laughs> that's how baseball goes. I think the Yankees win, but I've been doubting the Twins all year. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think I think the Yankees win, uh, but I, I think yeah, I have the Yankees too. I think whoever they face, uh, it's, it's likely gonna be the Astros. I think they'll handle them just fine, just because it's a seven game series. Yeah. Your pitching's not gonna be able to hold up in a seven game series. So I have the Yankees winning. I'm going to say they win. Uh, I say the Twins take a game from them. So I think the Yankees win three to one in that series. Um, yeah, I'll agree with that. Tampa Bay just beat the uh, the A's. Uh, Tampa Bay's looked great all year. They went for it at the trade deadline. They acquired guys in the off season like uh, Yandy Diaz. Yandy Diaz, uh, another great um, acquisition. Oh! Another great acquisition that uh, former Indian. I it. If it if the <laughs> if the Rays somehow beat the Astros, and the Astros no. look great, and I don't think they will, because the Astros pitching has been incredible, and their their offense is incredible. If the Rays beat the Astros, and I have to watch a series of Yandy Diaz, Jesus Aguilar, Cameron Maben, and Yandy Diaz or uh, um, Gio Urshela all go off, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> I am legitimately going to snap. I might not ever watch baseball again. Just because of... That's a lie. I, oh, my God. It, it's just so frustrating. I don't think the Tampa Bay... I don't think Tampa Bay wins it. I think Astros take... F- I, t- I think Astros win the series 4-2. to two. I got Tampa winning two games. I think Tampa's just been so good that it, it's, I, I can't have them getting a swept. Um, but no, I, I think the Astros are going to be just fine. I mean, Garrett Cole, Justin Verlander have been so good for them. Uh, this, this one guy they got off free agency, Michael Brantley, um, they got him for really cheap. Oh, um, um, no! they, Dr. He's, Smooth, he's, man. he's been really good for them. Just, Jesus, just a little Jesus Christ. Uh, but it's not like he's been amazing every time he's been healthy. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, it's not like he's been one of the most consistent. I want to die now. Consistent hitters of this. All right. This generation. But, all right. Uh, St. Louis and Braves. St. Louis took uh, game one last night, seven to six. Uh, Braves looked good and bad at the same time. St. Louis. Yeah. St. Louis looked okay. I, I still think the Braves win. I'm gonna give that a three yeah. to two, three to two series to the Braves. I think the Braves are just too good. Uh, I think St. Louis just had the. They took advantage of a just not. Not mediocre, but just a really underperforming NL Central all year. I, I the Cubs and the the Brewers should have done so much better than what they what they did. Um, so I, I think the St. Louis got the got credit. Of that. I mean, part of their their team is good, but I, I still think the Braves win that three to two. Um, and then Washington and LA. Washington beat Milwaukee to get into the playoffs to face LA. Uh, I, I was tweeting when that was happening that the Brewers are the team that the Indians wish they could be. Because they're a small market team, they're a smaller market than the Indians. Um, yet right. they they acquire guys, big time guys in need, like Christian Yelich and Lorenzo Cain. Uh, they're not afraid to yeah. spend. They're not afraid to spend that money. They're not afraid to trade prospects. Uh, they they <sighs> they play good baseball. They have a good manager. The only thing that the Brewers and the Indians are good at, uh, share in common, is they're really good at choking uh, important games away. So kill me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! Yeah, but the Nationals are gonna get annihilated by the Dodgers. Just saying, dude. I don't know. I, I, yeah, yeah. I think so. They might win one. I'll give them one game. All right. But, I just, I just love that the Nationals look so much better without Bryce Harper than they do with. I Bryce love Harper. it so much. It's hilarious. Bryce Harper is probably the most overrated baseball player I've ever watched in my entire life. 
Um, they lose Bryce Harper, and then they, they're they like, oh, we have this guy named Juan Soto, and he's super young, and he's going to be a freaking amazing baseball player for a long time. Ch- Childish Bambino is probably my favorite nickname for, for a uh, – for an, for an MLB MLB player, but, you know, I, I I do think LA wins. I think I think it's closer. I think LA wins three to two. I think Nationals take it to game Ooh. game five. Um, but, I mean, you still got Scherzer and Strasburg to deal with. Yeah, exactly. But, like you know. Washington's no slouch. I mean, Anthony Rendon has been awesome this year. Um, it, it, like you said, uh, like you said, Juan Soto's been really good. So I, I think it's going to be a good series. Um, but yeah, so that's that's been baseball playoffs. Uh, who do you think wins the World Series? And who do you think's in it? And who do you think wins it? All right, let's see. I'm gonna go Astros and Dodgers rematch, and <laughs> I'm gonna pick the Dodgers to lose again. Yeah. Oh man, if they lose, if they lose three years in a row, I. Oh, they're gonna be like the Bills of baseball. Wait, isn't this gonna be four years in a row for the Dodgers? Uh, Three or four. Let's see. Last year was Bo Sox and Dodgers. The year before that was Astros and Dodgers. And then it was Indians Cubs, right? Yeah, I can't believe they still have never finished that World Series after that uh, rain delay. Yeah, they kind of just canceled it. Crazy, crazy Crazy that they just that Rajay Davis home run was so exciting. They're like, all right, well, well, we can just we can just end it here, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't think anything else happened after that. They definitely did not leave Uh, Brian Shaw in after a twenty minute. Uh, rain delay when he had his career worst year against left-handed hatters and you had Brian Ote- or, uh, Dan Otero in the bullpen and Trevor Bauer in the bullpen who had really good splits against left-handers and for some reason they left Brian Shaw and after a 20 minute rain delay yeah no crazy can't believe they did that no they did I don't remember any I don't remember any of that either I can't I, I don't remember why Terry Francona ran Tyler Naquin instead of Michael Martinez as your pinch hitter and then Michael Martinez uh, Michael Martinez was our final hope ha ah! He would have been our final hope if that game continued. Oh, yeah. My bad. Never mind. We're good. That's right. That's right. Oh. Kill me. Uh, um, Moving yeah. on. Uh, uh, who do you have in the World Series? I got I got the Astros beating the Braves 4-2. Uh, to two. I really hope the Braves make the World Series. But I do, too. I think, I think Acuna and Ozzie Albies – and all the uh, Freddie Freeman, I think all those guys are just too excited not to be in the World Series. I really like watching those guys play. So, former Indian Josh Donaldson, <sighs> dude, that's been another. Like, I'm okay with not signing Josh Donaldson uh, for twenty three million dollars this year. I was completely fine with that not happening. I'm just not fine with that he pl- is playing so well when I literally watched. <laughs> I don't know what I watched from Josh Donaldson last year. But I thought I watched like the bones of Josh Donaldson play. Like that's the, that's I mean, the he was coming back from injury, but he was still off. He was for God. Us. He looked like he didn't know how to swing a bat. He was terrible, man. I I just I just hate the Indians organization right now. Oh. All right, all but right. We have Carlos Santana, so it's all good. If the Indians give him a lifetime contract, I I just would not care whatsoever. I, I'm at we the point. We need to give him. We need at, to give him the Bobby Bonilla contract. At I'm at the point. point where, like, I'd rather just watch Carlos Santana finish his career as an Indian and just trade Francisco Lindor away. I'm kind of at that point right now, just because I know, just because oh! I, just because I know, like, Francisco Lindor is not, is it, like, they're just not going to resign him because the Dolans refuse to spend money. But yeah. I'm just at that point right now. So a lot of fun things happening in Cleveland. What are the odds we get Puig back? <sighs> I don't know. Zero or point zero zero one percent. So I think both sides want to come back. I just don't know how financially reasonable that it is. Because like, if they can get Puig back for like a two-year, twenty million dollar contract, I'd be all over that. But I don't think that's gonna that's happen. Solid, yeah. If they even get like back Puig for like a more. for like a two-year, twenty-five mil, I I just don't know if Puig's gonna go for that. Like, I don't know what the market really? is for Puig. It's so weird. I really don't. It like I I. I I don't know. I don't think he stays, but if they can get a solid deal like that, I think both sides would want to would definitely want to bring him back. Um, yeah. uh, fun fact: Mike Freeman has more uh, home runs in an Indians uniform than Yasiel Puig. <laughs> Mike Freeman, man, uh, and Kipnis is probably gone now too, right? Uh, so he's another guy that I think he try. He's obviously going to want to get as much money as he can because he's obviously on the very fast downturn at, on his career. 
Mm-hmm. I just don't see him sign a one-year deal with the Indians or anything like that. I think. But what other teams would want Kipnis or want to pay him? I don't know. I like. I, I'm not sure. Like, I feel like Kipnis is going to get like probably six or seven million dollars a year. Uh, for his contracts, mm-hmm. I think that's probably a fair price for Kipnis. I, he still has the potential to be a very solid bat in the middle of your lineup. Oh. Yeah, and like his D, de- like he, he his defense is still um is still okay. So, but yeah, I I don't know what the market is for for Kipnis either. I I'm gonna say around six or seven. I think he's probably gonna get like a three year, maybe like eighteen twenty million dollar contract, and I think that's very solid for him. And I think he'll be very happy with right. that, especially with how his past few seasons have gone. It's just it's mm-hmm. a health problem for him. If he stays healthy, he's a very solid player. He's a very, very, very solid, solidified part of that middle lineup and and part of your part of your defense. But, dude, mm-hmm. he gets injured a lot. Yeah. So. But yeah, so that's 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 my favorite part about the Indians in baseball. My favorite part about it is them not knowing what they're doing. It's a good. Yeah, time. yeah, that it's something. I'm just really glad Jake Bowers is on this team. Did you? Oh no! Did you see that? Did you see that post? Uh, that article, a uh, couple days ago, where it's just like, oh, or, or, oh no, it's Frank Kona talking. He's like, oh yeah, Jake Bowers. Like when he goes 0 for four, he doesn't want to listen to anybody because he's just so frustrated. And when he's four for four, and he goes four for four, he thinks he's gonna be just fine, so he doesn't need any help. It's just like, how how do you let that happen? You are an MLB manager. Yeah. I coached right. rec baseball, and I would never let that happen. I, how how are you an MLB manager? How does that happen? And like, I, is there, Jake Bowers is a mystery. Jake Bowers sucks. That's my that's my TED talk. <laughs> do you know what that? Do you know what doesn't right, suck, let's Matt? Move on to some, you know what doesn't to a suck? New sport that apparently you want to talk about. You know you know what doesn't suck, Matt? What? The Cleveland State University dodgeball I team. I knew it. I knew it. Cleveland State went two and one at their OSU tur- the tournament at OSU. Uh, really good tournament. Uh, awesome job by the guys at OSU um, for hosting such a solid tournament. OSU did good, really too. They went three and zero. They look really good this year. Uh, um, OU went really. OU did really well. They went three and zero. OSU, Ohio, Miami, and CSU. That's your big four in the Ohio region now. CSU knocked off uh, Kent and Akron. Those were two teams that I just could never beat when I was playing for CSU, so that really hurt. But, um, I, I <laughs> but no, it's been awesome. University of Cincinnati, new team from last year. They look good. Ohio region looks awesome. You know, also looks awesome. VCU, VCU last year uh, had a really up and down year. They had a really good nationals, and now VCU is coming back. They're looking like they're going to be the formidable part of the East standings for. The uh, NCDA, uh, JMU upset Towson in their doubleheader. Um, Towson, I think Ben beat them handily, but Towson's the number two team in the nation. JMU, we didn't get to see at Nationals last year just due to um, some internal stuff, but you know, it, it's, oh it's it's awesome to watch. Uh, but yeah, so that's all I had to talk about. Uh, oh, WVU, uh, WVU is like our sister team last year. Uh, love the guys over at WVU. Uh-huh. They're doing good too. Proud of them. Heck okay. yeah. Okay. But right. have you seen the movie Dodgeball? <laughs> <laughs> uh. I tell you what, that Dodgeball movie, that's something. All right, Matt. <laughs> I'd like to talk to you about um, my personal nightmare that has kind of turned into a ra- reality these, these past few years. Gotcha. Uh, past 20 years of my life. Uh, okay. The Cleveland Browns quarterback situation. Yes. It is. It is. It has been a what you could say dumpster fire. A roller. A roller coaster with no ups. Yeah, that's been about, about that? it. Besides, like except for the except for the very end of the ride where we're at now. Right. All right. So Matt, we are going to talk about right. th- these thirty quarterbacks in these past twenty years. Um, yep. By doing a little NFL. Well, not NFL draft, but a Browns QB draft. Let me play the draft sound effect. Gotcha. I can totally hear this. All right, Matt. Once again, yes. I want you to I want you to recreate the NFL draft sound effect. Frick. All right. Wait, are we doing like the pick is in? 
Yes. Or we do it. Oh, okay. So it's like. Do 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 do. That's actually oh. not horrible. Uh, yes. <laughs> That's respectable. All right, Matt. Okay. Since since I got first pick in the uh, Quentin Tarantino draft, I will allow you to pick whether one you would like this to be a standard draft where you pick, I pick, you pick, I pick, or a snake draft. Wow. And I will allow you to pick your spot then, if you want to be first pick or second pick, depending on the draft. Gotcha. I am going to determine, this is not a snake draft. All right, we're going pick by pick. Standard. And I get the first pick. Okay, God. Well, you're going to win the draft because there's only one quarterback that really matters. (laughs) Yep. All right, let's hear it. My first pick. For the Cleveland Browns quarterbacks. Brandon Whedon, baby! Brandon Whedon, the best quarterback in the Browns franchise history since they returned. I'm writing his name right now. B-R-A-N-D-O-N-W-E-E-D-E-N. Believe in Whedon. He's better than Baker Mayfield. I'm sorry. I I know this is a harsh reality for you guys to face. But Brandon Whedon made Josh Gordon's career, all right? Josh Gordon had the luxury of playing with two of the greatest quarterbacks in Brandon Whedon and Tom Brady. And Brandon Whedon was the former uh, holder for most passing yards in a season for the Cleveland Browns before Baker Mayfield rudely stole that. But it's all good. Brandon Whedon is my number one Browns quarterback. You may now select Baker Mayfield. Uh, Wait, are you being serious? Audio's gone. (laughs) Are you being serious? (laughs) Audio's gone. I can't hear you, but I'm assuming you're picking Baker Mayfield. Uh, Am I right? With 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 my second pick, or with the second pick in with the, the f- with, with the, the first pick? Is that what you said? Sec- second, second pick, pick in pick. the. I'm fat. That's rude. In, okay, in you didn't the, have to say that. In the, Andre Ethier, is that what you said? I'm, he's a baseball player for the Dodgers, and he's retired. <laughs> This with, is a podcast. With the second pick. Something second pick. With. With. The. With the. Second pick. Second pick. In the. In. In. <laughs> <laughs> Why is your sound gone? I don't know. Oh, this is the time. Can you just take Baker Mayfield already? Jesus. I will select Baker Mayfield out of Oklahoma Baker University. Baker Mayfield! You said Baker Mayfield! Out of Oklahoma University. Baker Mayfield is the best Browns quarterback I've ever What's watched. That? You took Spurgeon win? <laughs> That's a move. Oh, my God. Dude, uh, where's your sound? Okay. Not? No. What do you mean? Um, all right. So, yeah, I picked, I picked Baker Mayfield. As I was saying, Baker Mayfield is the best Browns quarterback I've ever watched in my entire life. What? Have you not seen... 2012 and 2013 seasons. So I will say something about Brandon Whedon. Um, my favorite, my favorite game in Brandon Whedon's career with the Browns was they were facing Jacksonville Jaguars, and it was obvious that Brandon, yeah. the Brandon Whedon was out the door uh, at the end of the season. And I think like mm-hmm. he threw like four picks and four touchdowns on every single pass play was to Josh Gordon. I'm not kidding you. Every single pass play was like a fly route to Josh Gordon, and Josh Gordon had like. <laughs> A, like like two hundred like thirty yards of receiving that game and like three yeah. touchdowns. That that is my favorite Brandon Weeding game. I love that game. Legend. Okay. Um, but yeah, I really picked Brandon Weeding over Baker. I, I, oh, I I'm no. I'm not surprised, but I probably could I probably could have take took the second pick. Y- yeah yeah good. you could have. <laughs> All right with. All right, let's see third pick. Who do I take? Ooh. This is a hot pick. This is a hot pick. Are you guys ready for this? I am taking Tim Couch, baby. Mm. Tim Couch, the most underappreciated and most hated, one of the most hated Browns quarterbacks. I don't think he's the most Even one of the most hated. He at one point was really hated because, I mean, this team was an expansion team. The freaking coaching was always being messed around, but Tim Couch would have been a good quarterback. I'm not going to say, like, Hall of Fame, but I'm going to say he would have had a really good career had I think it not so been for joining the Cleveland Browns. And it was mostly, like, that offensive line. He got beat up really bad. Yeah. But, um, 
But you know, I, 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 I've, I've really never noticed the hate for Tim Couch. I think everybody's kind of come around on that now and uh, realized that. I think everyone, everyone places the start of this trend on Tim Couch like he was a bad quarterback, but he really wasn't. He was on a bad team. Let's let's look same up the, same as Brandon. Wheat. Let's look up Tim Couch's uh, rec, uh, stats with the Browns. I'm, I'm gonna say most of it was just because like he got just absolutely destroyed. So uh, he had a. Why he was twenty two and thirty seven as a Browns quarterback. Right. Oh, so Pro Football uh, Reference doesn't use QBR um, because it's a garbage stat. So I'm glad they don't do that. That's Skip's favorite stat. Um. So let's see. He had how many yards? How many yards did he have? Uh, am I blind? He had eleven thousand yards in, mm-hmm. in five seasons with the Browns. He had sixty four touchdowns and sixty seven interceptions. It's not great. But like fifty nine point eight percent completion percentage. Yeah, that's not great. But like, I, I, he obviously didn't have weapons around him. Like Quincy Morgan was his best wide receiver. Oh, Quincy Morgan, what a legend! Kevin uh, Johnson. Kevin Johnson. Um. So I. Oh, audio's I, gone again. Oh this well. This is a fun time. Oh well. <laughs> fourth pick. Fourth pick. All right, fourth pick, baby. I select. He's gonna take Charlie Fry. I select Kelly Holcomb. Kelly Holcomb? Yes, Kelly Holcomb. Is that we said? Yes. He's taking Kelly Holcomb, folks, the only Browns quarterback to play in a playoff game. Yes, that, that is correct. The only Kelly play- Holcomb. Talk only- about Kelly Holcomb, and I will nod as if I can hear you. The, the, Matt, Matt is correct. Kelly Holcomb is the only uh, yes, Browns quarterback in the past, yes, past 20 years to uh, play in a playoff game. I agree. Uh, I, 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 got, I got really <laughs> nothing else. To, really nothing else to say besides that. He was fine when he was with the Browns. Um Four years with the Browns. Yes, that's also 30, a good point. Three, three, three thousand yards, which that's he not. He was great. four and eight. Uh, I don't know if you said that, but he's he was four and eight as a starter. Twenty twenty six touchdowns and twenty one interceptions. So a positive a positive touchdown yeah. to interception ratio uh, yeah, for a Browns quarterback is is uh, is is one of the few gems. So uh, I will hand it off to you, to you for the next pick. Is it my pick? Yes. Are you done talking about Kelly Holcomb? Yes. All right. <laughs> this is so fun. All right. This is a good time. All right. Who do I take? I'm not prepared for this at all. Uh, let's see. All right. So you took Holcomb and Baker. I took Tim Couch, Brandon. <laughs> I took Brandon Weed with the first pick. Oh, my God. All right. Okay. There's no one good left. Frick. We're already. All right. I guess I'll take Derek Anderson since he. Mm. Led us to a ten and six season. He went ten and five as a starter that year, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Derek Anderson. We're not going to talk about anything else other than that o eight season where he went, where we went ten and six. We're not going to talk about the next year. All right, let's see. Let's let's oh. pull this up. He's actually sixteen and eighteen as a Brown starter. Freaking fifty eight touchdowns, fifty five picks. Derek Anderson. Uh, we sh- we should have been in the playoffs that year. We should have. That oh, was, it was, it's, it was the year was two thousand seven, not two thousand eight. Uh, the year that Derek and uh, the year is also saying some things. That the I'm year sure that that the year that that happened. Um, Derek Anderson. Uh, what was it? What happened that year? All right. So the first thing that happened. Um, Phil Dawson had a very had a short kick against the Pittsburgh Steelers that could have won the game. Um, they faced the Arizona Cardinals and Kellen Winslow was pushed out of bounds when that rule was still a thing. Um, the Oakland Raiders called a timeout when Phil Dawson was kicking a field goal and they blocked it. Um, while the play was happening, while the play was happening, they called a timeout. The refs still called it and, uh, they, they lost the game through there. Um, what else happened? Um, I can hear you again. I just, I just reconnected. All right. I was just talking about how all the losses in 07 happened and that they should have had like at least four more losses or four more wins because they faced. So Phil Dawson had that short field goal against the Pittsburgh Steelers. I remember that like the, like that, uh, like the, like the back of my hand uh, that the Oakland Raiders called a timeout while Phil Dawson was kicking the game winning kick and they blocked the next attempt. Uh, (laughs) The other one was Kellen Winslow being pushed out of bounds against the Arizona Cardinals. And that should have been a, offensive or a, a defensive pass interference because that rule was still a thing like the receiver was in the air you weren't allowed to push him uh, that was still when that rule was a thing i can't think of any other times they should have won um but yeah they they uh 
Yeah, I whatever, whatever. I we're Probably. past it. Browns are making the playoffs this year. They're wearing the Super Bowl. Um. <laughs> All right. All right. Pick four, baby. Um, pick four. So you took Derek Anderson. So I'm going to take um, the hometown hero Brian Hoyer um, with my, with my next Weed pick. Job. I'm pretty sure he's the only quarterback on this list that has a winning record. Um, Brian Hoyer was six. Brian Hoyer was very good. Um, no, he wasn't. Shut up. Very good for like the first half of the 2014 season, and like a little right, bit of the, a little bit of the 2013 season before he got injured on that Monday night game uh, against the or is a Thursday night game. It was a Thursday night game against the Bills the and Br- night game. And Br- I will have you know, and Brandon Weeden, got hurt that game. Brandon and Weeden they were came losing, in. And then Weeden came in and we won. So Brandon, he should be nine and seven. <laughs> Brandon Weeden had a very good had a very good uh, <laughs> a very good game. Yeah. Then. Uh, Prime time, baby. Believe in Whedon, please. Um, but yeah, I and then and then they benched Brian Hoyer after he had a few bad games, and then put in probably the worst quarterback I've ever seen put on a Browns uniform in Johnny Manziel. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll, I'll oh. take I'll take the hometown kid Brian Hoyer, who uh, should have should have stuck with that. They, they, I don't know how you bench a bench a quarterback at seven and four. That's just yeah, that's yeah, it's pro- that probably wasn't a smart move. Mm-mm. Uh, All right. I wasn't taking Hoyer just for the fact that he that he kept taking Wheaton's job. So that was a personal vendetta against. Him. Okay, so you know also uh, never mind. What say it? I I I never mind. I Wheaton actually okay. never mind. mind. Freaking thought, man. All right, I don't even know who to pick now. Holy cow, this is a list. Um, <laughs> this is a list of characters. I tell you. All right, you know what? We're gonna go with. The helicopter himself. Josh Son of a gun. Josh McCown, baby. Underappreciated. A solid quarterback. You know, he, this the team around him, he played solid. And I don't know. I feel like, what was his record? He was 1-7 with the Browns. But he, I feel like he played good enough to, to win at least three games, you know? <sighs> yeah. I Before Baker, Josh McCown was probably my favorite quarterback I've ever watched with the Browns. He obviously wasn't very good. But he wasn't. He wasn't bad. Like he wasn't. For Brown standards, he was really good. All right. Really, I want to say it was like the 2015 season. Like he was actually yeah. making like a legitimate Pro Bowl like kind of run with the Browns. Like he had like he had like 3,500 yards passing, like like a solid a solid touchdown interception ratio. He had and, 12 touchdowns and four picks as a Brown. Yeah, like that's that's really good. Um, 63.7 percent completion percentage here. Yeah, he played he played really well. And like he went in there every time just not afraid to take a shot whatsoever. Um that was my favorite thing about him. Like he just wanted to go out there and win. And I love I love Josh McCown. I I'm kind of disappointed or I I was kind of disappointed that when he left Cleveland that he didn't get like a job offer, but it's obvious he still wants to play. I hope I hope when he finally retires that the Browns will offer him a quarterback job or something. I think he's going to be a phenomenal coach. Um yeah. but but yeah, no, I'm I'm all about Josh McCown. Uh, he was actually he was right here. He has the record for most passing yards in a game. I'm not too sure if Baker broke this, but I don't think he did. Uh, it says 457 yards in a game, so I, no, I don't Baker, think Baker, Baker hasn't hit that yet. And he also is the first Browns quarterback to throw for 300 yards in three games in a row. Which I'm I, I did Baker. Uh, Baker could have done that. I don't know. I don't think he did. This is an older article, but Josh McCown, folks. I I don't think he. <laughs> Did. He might have when he was like, I don't know. Uh, he might after the end of the season. He might. Yeah. He, yeah. Absolutely. All right. Uh, with my, I don't know how to do math here. Eighth pick. Um, with my eighth. Pi- yeah. 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 Eighth pick. I am going to pick uh, Tarad Taylor. Holy what? I don't, when it comes to pure talent, besides Baker Mayfield, Tyrod Taylor might be the next man up. Um, I'm. So I will say, so he obviously only played, he only started two games with the Browns. Um, he had that really weird game against the Steelers where they tied last year, and then he also played really, he played, he played solid with the Saint against the Saints last year when they lost in overtime. Or no, they lost because Zane Gonzalez. Keep talking about to run, all right? They lost because Zane Gonzalez couldn't make a kick. Um, but the problem with Tyrod Taylor is he was stuck in a. Um, in a Haley offense, uh, Todd Haley offense that 
Uh, it came out after uh, uh, Hugh Jackson was fired and Todd Haley was fired. Excuse me, that uh, that Todd Haley was um, what's the word uh, was was sabotaging the offense. So Tyrod Taylor was getting the brute end of that. They they weren't calling the plays that they should have been calling. They had they had plays lined up that honestly fit the system. Uh, that was shown in the preseason when Tyrod Taylor uh, just like marched right down the field at like every time he played. So uh, I think that Tyrod Taylor got like the brute end of it. I think he's still a, a very solid quarterback. I think he's a middle of the road guy. He just got a really he got really shafted by the Browns there. So um, so that that's why I have Tyrod Taylor there. Um, I, it's just based off pure talent that besides Baker Mayfield, I think he probably is the next guy. So that is. All right. My fifth quarterback for the Browns. Whew. We're starting to get tell you what, man. Yeah, we're it's, it's already hard and we're not even close to the end. That's the thing. Oh man. Uh, This is, this is, this is a list of characters. You know what? I'm gonna do it because I was at the Browns Chargers game where we went one and fifteen. Oh, RG three, baby. Oh, son I'm of a gun! Up. I was hoping he was gonna fall. So RG three. Th- at this point, he was already broken, but I-, I think he showed a little bit of promise with the Browns. This was a bad team, but you know what? I was at that Browns Chargers game, and I saw how excited the entire stadium was. To not go 0 and 16. Little did we know, we were still gonna do it the very next year. But you know what, RG3, you got a special place in my heart. I thought you would have. I think if he would have stayed healthy, somehow with the Browns, I think we could have won a couple more games. But I think so you know too. What? Yeah, so I'm gonna take RG3. I thought he was solid with us. Uh, this is a reminder that when Hugh Jackson saw RG3 worked out, he he said that the, <laughs> he felt the earth move beneath his feet. Um, as I was saying, that this is the uh, same coach that called a flea flicker in their own end zone for RG3, who then threw it into triple coverage. <laughs> oh. <sighs> that was one of just the worst. Okay. All right, let's move on. I, I, I don't feel like getting sad talking about that. Um, <laughs> all right, so you took RG3. Yeah. I was hoping he's going to fall like one more. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to do it. With my next pick, I have to take my guy. Heck yeah! Charlie Fry. Yeah, I almost took him, too. I, 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 was, I, was, I was sweating bullets there. I was sweating bullets. I think Charlie Fry is another, is another victim of he just no. played, played with a really bad team. Um, uh, he was going to be the savior of Cleveland. Uh, yeah. An, an Akron University product. Uh, I, think he, I think he was from Willoughby, Willoughby Heights. That sounds like... Charlie Fry. That's a, yeah. So he's a Hold somewhat up. hometown kid, Willard, Ohio. Um, but yeah, no. I, uh, Charlie. I have to look at when the Browns drafted him. Do you know? Um, so okay, he was a third round pick. Okay, yeah, he mind. was a third round pick. I want to say I just had to make sure they didn't take him over Aaron Rodgers. Hold on, I want to say he had like, uh, dude, I'm telling you, he had like multiple like rookie of the weeks. Like his 2005 year, like Charlie Fry was, uh, he was supposed to be the savior of Cleveland. And okay, so just for a little context for 2005 Rookie of the Week, Alex Smith was awful. Aaron Rodgers hasn't been playing. Frank Gore was a backup, and Ronnie Brown was splitting carries with Ricky Williams. So there's a little context for you. I I think you are just not. Yeah, he was he was. He was a three-time Rookie of the Week in 2005. That's with an accomplishment. Carnell Williams, Dominique Foxworth, Tyson Thompson, Odell Thurman, Kyle Orton, Heath Miller, Reggie Kyle Brown. Orton! Dear God! Sam Con Godow, Sean Marion, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and Demarcus Ware. <laughs> I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you Carnell Cadillac Williams. That's about all I'll give you. Um, all right, so I took my guy. I got I got my guy. Um, so well, I was stupid enough to take my guy with the first pick over Baker Mayfield. So that's how I made it. I, I still might have not drafted Weed by now. <laughs> what? Oh, that's disappointing. All right, all, all right, right, Matt. What's your uh, What's your next pick here? Oh, frick, dude. Uh, 
Oh, man. This is a pick. I tell you what. This guy is still in the NFL. This oh. guy threw the most check downs I've ever seen until I saw Joe Flacco and Tom Brady. I know exactly who it is. Colt McCoy, baby. I'm, it's third and 15. You better throw that freaking screen pass to whoever our run, freaking Montario Hardesty if he was helping. Oh, Spins McGee. That's my guy. <laughs> I don't know. Who I love Montario Hardesty. Uh, who, who did – Who did? so what year was that? That was like what, 2010, 2011? Was this the Peyton Hillis – Peyton was Hillis was Peyton one of Hillis? his. Peyton Hillis was his yeah. uh, was the leading receiver for the Browns one of those years. Um, oh man! So let's see. Uh, McCoy was drafted in 2010, I believe. So 2010 Browns roster. Let's look at let's look at some of these names. He was six. He had six wins as a Brown. Okay, that's kind of impressive. He was six and fifteen. So some other running backs: Jerome Harrison. Uh, Jerome, oh my God! That was the same he ran year for that like Jerome. Two hundred yards. Yeah, Jerome Harrison ran for like two hundred like ninety yards against the Chiefs. Um, that, oh, with Matt Castle as the Chiefs quarterback, that was still like the most bizarre <laughs> game. Um, Lawrence Vickers was the fullback. Um, oh his, my God, what a legend! To be fair, this is why uh, Colt McCoy threw through so many checkdowns is because his receiving core was Chancey Stucky, Brian Robisky, Mohamed Masakwa, and Josh Cribbs, uh, <laughs> with Ben Ben Watson uh, as his tight end. Uh, oh, let's move. Sick. Let's move into the uh, next year, Cleveland Browns. Uh, Peyton, Hills, Peyton Hills was still the running back. Uh, running back For a wise, little bit. Chris Abinaga. That was my guy. Oh my god, he follows me on Twitter. Oh, Oban Marisek uh, was the fullback. Uh, Mohamed oh, Basakwa, Jordan Norwood, uh, Brian Robisky, and Greg Little were the wide receivers. Greg, holy cow, Little couldn't oh, catch a pass to save his life. God, that, this is. Uh, so I will say this about Colt McCoy. Um, I think his first game was against the Steelers away, and this was when they benched Jake Delhomme or Jake Delhomme got hurt or what? I don't know. Jake Delhomme <laughs> sucked. Whatever. The, yeah, he, whatever. The he's case. not going to be drafted for a while, folks. No, absolutely not. Uh, Jake Delhomme sucked. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure like he came in and he looked like very solid, and then he like he had an okay rookie year. Like it wasn't horrible. Uh, what was his rookie year? Oh, that's that's actually a different quarterback that I may be drafting next. I don't know yet. Uh, his rookie year with the Browns, he went for 1,500 yards passing, six touchdowns, nine interceptions, and eight games with a 60% completion rating. So not great, but... Uh, this is his rookie year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So it it was okay, whatever. And then, boy, holy cow, he did. Jesus Christ, I just hate looking at all these. All right, whatever. We're going to move on to that. But uh, And then he oh, got man. he got hit by Jerome Harrison on like a – James Harrison. James Harrison, sorry. On a, yeah. either Monday or Thursday night game, and he was never the same ever then because Jer- J- Jerome Harrison just went right – James. For James Harrison. Why do I keep saying Jerome Harrison? <laughs> Who's Jerome Harrison? He's our running back that ran for 290 Oh, yards. yeah, duh. Duh. Jesus. Come on, bro. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> are you even a real Browns fan? Stop. Um, <laughs> all right. Oh, man. We'll move into the next pick. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. Also, Colt McCoy had Pat Shermer as his uh, coach, so I can't hold that That is true. Him. Pat Shermer and... Uh, did he have Mangini? Mangini. Yeah. Jesus. All right. Um... <laughs> And then Mike Pettin came in, <laughs> Rob Chinsinski came in for a year, and uh. <laughs> oh my god! Um, all right, so I think with my next pick, uh huh, I'm going to go with one of the most reliable yet still not great uh, backup quarterbacks that the Browns had. Ooh, we're gonna go with Jason Campbell. Uh, Jason Campbell, baby. It was a pick between him and three other guys, so I hope you don't pick any of them, but you probably will. Um, uh, yeah, Jason Campbell is a very reliable uh, quarterback. He, like, he actually knew like what he was doing. Uh, he just had a very bad team around him. What years did Jason Campbell play at the Browns? Was that 2013 and 2014? Uh, only 2013. Only 2013. Interesting. He went 1-7. So, Jesus. Um, the 2013 coach by Rob Chitinski Browns, uh, his, his weapons were Chris Abinaga, 
Uh, Obanaya. Obanaya. What what do we got here? Uh, his running backs, uh, Trent Richardson. Oh my. <laughs> Willis McGahey. I forgot about that. Ah. Oh, Willis McGahey. Fozzie was... Whitaker. Oh my God! <laughs> uh, his tight ends were Gary Barnage and Jordan Cameron. Turn, it turned out like both those guys were going to be solid tight ends for the Browns. Yeah. His uh, receiving core consisted of oh Greg Little, Travis Benjamin, Josh Gordon, and you're gonna you're gonna cringe a little bit when you hear this name, Devon Bess. I don't know if you remember Devon. Oh, no, De- he was terrible. <laughs> the, the the Devon Bess saga was something in the Browns. Uh, Oh, Jesus Christ. This is so bad. Oh, my and we're, God. And these are, like, the top quarterbacks that we're talking about here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, my goodness. This hurts to look at. All right. Um, oh, that was the year that the Browns traded Trent Richardson for a first-round pick. And everyone hated it at first, and it turned out to be one of the greatest moves in history. And who did they use that first-round pick on? <sighs> Was what year was that? Twenty fourteen? Uh, did we use it on Justin Gilbert or Manzel? Used on Manzel. Oh no! All right. Oh god, Justin Gilbert, Johnny Manzel. When we could have got like Khalil Mack, Khalil Mack Odell, Beck, Odell Beckham, it right away. Could have got Khalil Mack. Uh, quarterbacks are still available. Derek Carr and uh, Teddy Bridgewater still would take any either of those guys over Johnny Manzel. Um, I don't think it's a hot take at all. Um, Jesus. Oh, all right, your next pick. My seventh quarterback, folks. Don't take either of them. Don't take either of them. I got to do it, man. Uh, I don't know why, but I, 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 I had a soft spot when I was a dumb kid watching this guy play. All right. We're going to go Jeff Garcia. Okay. Woo. All right. I was fine with Jeff Garcia. Him. All right. He showed. I don't, I don't want to say promise. But he, he showed, gave us a little bit of hope he because he was a solid. Yes, a, <laughs> that's the word. <laughs> that's, he was three, three and seven as a Browns quarterback. That's right on par. Uh, Seventeen hundred yards, ten touchdowns, nine interceptions. Uh, uh, he. It, this says he remains the only quarterback to win a season opener since nineteen ninety nine. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, and then he followed that game against Dallas, and he had a quarterback rating of zero. So that's Jeff Garcia for you. Uh, he is he is the Marcus Mariota before Marcus Mariota. All right, you never knew what you were gonna get, and that's all I gotta say with Jeff Garcia. And I liked playing with him in Madden with the Browns. Mm, okay, that's fair. All right, so I'm that's going, all I got. So my next pick, I am going to just con- keep uh, getting a monopoly on the hometown kids that were supposed to save the Browns. Are you getting Brady Quinn? With my next pick, I'm going to pick. <laughs> A first-round selection in the 2007 draft, Brady Quinn. The Browns traded up for this guy oh, with the Miami Dolphins. Brady Quinn was back in the showroom being all sweaty. Uh, <laughs> I was there against the 49ers when Brady Quinn made his NFL debut. Uh, he went one for three, f- or, or I'm sorry, he went three for eight for 45 yards, and that was it. Um, that was that was magical. You thought, oh my God. This guy with the 37.5% completion range is going to save the Browns. Um, after that, he started – how many games did he start? He started 13 games with the Browns. Uh, if mm-hmm. you could find his win-loss number with the Browns, that would be great. As a starter, he only played 12, and he was 3-9. and nine. Okay, 3-9. and nine. That's about on par. Uh, Do you remember that shootout game he had against uh, a rookie, Matthew Stafford, in the Lions? And I'm pretty sure we lost – See, was it with the Lions? Because I could have swore you played like a game against the Broncos, and it was like a shootout. Uh, let's see. Well, let's no, see. it was against the Lions. It says he was the first Browns quarterback in 22 years to have four touchdowns and no interceptions in a game. Naturally, the Browns lost on an untimed down after Hank Potate was flagged for a pass interference in the end zone on a Lions Hail Mary pass. So I'm looking at his 2008 game log. Um, he also had a shootout with, uh, the Denver, the Denver team. Mm-hmm. I want to say it was like a, like a Monday night or a Thursday night game or something like that. Uh, it was a Thursday night game. It was a 34 to 30 win for the Denver, uh, Brady Quinn at 23 for 35, 239 yards and two touchdowns. Um, that's about as good All as right. prime time. Yeah. Right. Like <laughs> 
they should have just given this guy more chances. He definitely would have won. Um, <laughs> let's look at some. Let's look at some. Oh yeah, you're, I I do see the uh, Detroit game. He had a loss to the San Diego. Wait, who? What is that abbreviation? Why is, is the it? San Diego Chargers abbreviation SDG instead of SDC? Uh, <laughs> well, I get, I get it now. because it's San Diego. Okay, um, but <laughs> whatever. That that's garbage right there. He went twenty five for forty five for two hundred seventy one yards and three touchdowns. That's not awful for Brown standards. It's actually it pretty good. Awful. Let's look at the let's look at the two thousand eight Cleveland Browns. Let's let's uh, in two thousand nine Cleveland Browns. Let's look at these weapons that he had. Um, Josh Cribbs threw oh. a pass. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Lawrence Vickers was oh, the nice. fullback again. Um, Jamal yeah. Jamal Lewis was the running back. Uh, I love Jamal Lewis. The Browns got the yeah. next the next reincarnation of him and and Nick Chubb. Uh, oh shoot! Uh, Cedric Step Steptoe. Cedric Steptoe. Oh my God! How do I what not remember name? this guy? Uh, I remember him. Braylon oh, Edwards, Dante Stallworth, Jesus. <laughs> Dante Stallworth's a murderer. He 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 joined the Browns and murdered he someone. He literally killed a man. Um, <laughs> and then who's his weapons in 2009? Brian Robisky, Braylon Edwards, Mohamed Masakoy, and Josh Cribbs. Oh Was my Steve God. Hyden still a thing? I don't think so. I don't see oh, him man. on here. Uh, wait, who threw? Did wait? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I just saw something here. I just. <laughs> Okay, no, never mind, never mind. Phil Dawson threw a pass. All right, let's where go. was I when this happened? I Holy don't know. Cow. I don't know. I gotta. Okay, I gotta find that on YouTube when we're. All right, this. with your next pick, who are you taking, Matt? Oh frick, Jesus, man. Uh, I got one more guy. If you take him, I'm gonna be very upset because this was my guy. Your guy. Well, don't besides besides the Sean Kaiser. Yeah, okay, I was about to say, don't tell me you're taking the Sean Kaiser. Um. Ah, uh, frick, dude. This is hard. This Let's... is hard. I'm going to go Trent Dilfer. All right? <laughs> oh, what a garbage pick. Uh, <laughs> they're all garbage, actually. <laughs> all right, so Trent Dilfer, he was 4-7 and seven as a Brown starter, which actually isn't bad. Uh, 2,300 yards, 11 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Uh it says Phil Savage traded for him and immediately gave him the 33-year-old Trent Dilfer a three-year contract extension, only for him to play 11 games with us and uh, get cut. That so I, I want Trent Dil. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I got nothing. I, I'm struggling to think of anything positive to say about these guys. Growing up, Trent Dilfer is like the first NFL player I remember that I hated. Like. <laughs> Him with the Browns, I remember just being like, this is the first time I was ever like, like oh my god, this guy sucks! Like, <laughs> I remember hating Trent Dilfer so much. And Trent Dilfer has this saying, you cannot lose games in the NFL and still win. And Trent <laughs> Dilfer did exactly that. He did exactly that. Oh, man. Oh, Super think- Bowl quarterback, winning quarterback Trent Dilfer, I might add. All right. I don't think... He uh, carried we- that Ravens defense to a Super Bowl. I don't think we ever mentioned um, with the Derek Anderson and Charlie Fry fiasco that Charlie Fry won the starting job off a coin toss. Um, I don't think that was ever <laughs> mentioned. <laughs> I can't. That's I one can't. of the more that's one of the more bizarre moments in Browns history that like I think people like completely forget oh. about that Romeo Cornell really decided the starting quarterback because by by a coin flip. Um, and he is now with Patrick Mahomes. Is he not with oh, the Chiefs Romeo now? Cornell. I thought you were talking about Derek yeah. Anderson. Uh, no. Yeah, Romeo Cornell is with the with, is with the Chiefs. So thanks, Romeo. All right. Uh, f- with my next pick, I'm going with another reliable backup. Oh God. This was Don't my guy. The... Don't tell me you're going Kevin Hogan. Mm-mm. Oh, the sidearm <laughs> slinging Seneca Wallace. Seneca Wallace. He was a Packers backup at one point and. I remember, I remember fun. watching Seneca Wallace play quarterback, and I was like, I've never seen a quarterback play like this before. Like, he, he looked like he <laughs> knew what he was doing a little bit. Oh, my God. Seneca Wallace with the Browns. Let's, let's look here. With the Browns, went 1-6. Uh, oh, boy. A completion rate of 57%. Uh, 
1,200 yards, six touchdowns, and four interceptions. We got a positive touchdown interception ratio here. <laughs> oh, man. And Seneca Wallace was my guy. Do you remember the game when both him and Jake DeLone both left the game with high ankle sprains? Yeah, I do remember that. That, game. Happen- that happened. Only the Cleveland Browns, folks. I- and then was was did that was that when Colt McCoy then came in? Um, um yes. Okay. This is hard, man. Why did Josh Cribbs throw? S- oh, okay. Never mind. Okay, never mind. I misread that. <laughs> Josh Cribbs got sacked and never threw a completion or interception as the, with the Browns in 2011. Thanks. Why is Josh Cribbs listed as a fullback? What? <laughs> okay. He was All a right. lot of things. He was not a fullback. He was a lot of things, and a good football player was not really one of them. He said a good kick return. He's one of the best kick returners of all time. <laughs> yeah. That's about Besides that, and, then, that, he and then he wanted to be a receiver, and then his whole career went down. Oh, man, I don't know who to pick. I remember the Arizona Cardinals game in 2007 when he threw a touchdown. and It was like a fake. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) All right. Oh, God. I don't know who to – oh, I know who I'm picking. Who are we picking here? You know what? I said his name. I thought you were going to take him, so I'll take Kevin Hogan. Ha! Son of a gun. Oh, you actually wanted him? Yeah, I was actually going to pick him next. (laughs) Yeah. uh, He's got – he can run the ball. For some reason, he was good at running the ball. Uh, 621 yards, four touchdowns, seven interceptions, uh, only one game as a starter, and a quarterback rating of 61.5. It was a magical game. Don't you take that away from him. Kevin, I tell you what, fantasy-wise, one of the better quarterbacks on this list, all right? Uh, That's all I have on Kevin. I want to say his his debut was against the Chiefs. Um, That sounds right. Yes, that he did sound right. He did nothing but do QB options, and like I immediately fell, <laughs> I immediately fell in love with the guy. Oh, free, free the QB option um, was my was was my new tagline. I was all about it. Uh, yeah, Jesus, Kevin Morris. Hogan, guys. What are we're we're at about the halfway point, and we're already at Kevin Hogan. <laughs> um, I just took a quarterback that has one career start. Halfway through this list. I will raise you and take another quarterback that has one career start with the Cleveland. I know who you're taking. I know who you're taking. Wait, let me make sure he has one career start with the Browns. I'm pretty sure. I know you're taking Thad Lewis. I am taking Thad Lewis. I knew it. (laughs) Oh. Uh, Thad, Thad Lewis. Freaking Lewis. Thad Lewis started the the last game of the season with the Browns against the Bills, I want to say. Um did he have a stat line for that? Uh, 22 for 33, 204 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. It was against Pittsburgh. Was it against Pittsburgh? Yes. Oh, he played for Buffalo. That's what it was. Yeah. Um, yes, Thaddeus Lewis. Uh... <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right. Do you have it? anything else to say about Thad Lewis? Nothing. Um, my, what, I don't know if you ever watched the uh, E60 that – they did with Joe Thomas, and he was listing off all the quarterbacks that he played with. And um, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And and they also had Mike Polk as like an like an interlude, like uh, kind of comic relief. And uh, one of my mm-hmm. favorite things from that was he was just randomly yelling at the stadium that he played with Thad Lewis. And it, I, don't, I don't know why, but it was it was just hilarious. <laughs> uh, oh. more, more of his uh, quips and intros and comic relief. Uh, when they talked about Brady Quinn, he's like, beautiful man, not a great quarterback. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> talked about the bones of RG3. Yeah, that, that, was, oh, that, was, a, that was a hilarious segment. Um, all right. Ah, keep talking. I'm trying to find a good quarterback here. Frank. <laughs> um, <sighs> you know what? I'm going to do it. You going to no, take him? No, I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Um, you know what? I was going to take Manziel. Uh, that's what I was thinking. But then I saw Connor Shaw. And so mm. I'm taking Connor. I'm taking Connor Shaw. One career start. Oh, against and one. the Baltimore I'm... Ravens in 2016, I want to say, right? Absolutely. Uh, he was 14 for 28 for 177 yards. No touchdowns, one interception. And, uh,. 
he uh, bruised his kidney and dislocated his finger. <laughs> oh, Connor Shaw, everyone. Connor Shaw. What a nightmare. Um, he happened. He, we took him the same year as Manziel. I'll have you know. Right. And he was the better quarterback. Was he though? I don't care. I, I don't care either. <laughs> This is all just real living, just bad memories. I almost took him, all right? That was a close one. I almost took Johnny Manziel. Do I take Manziel? No, I take the uh, oh. 30-yard bomb-throwing Cody Kessler. Uh, Cody freaking Kessler. Is he still in the league? I think he is. I think he's with the Jags. That's Last I saw, he was with the Jags. He is a quarterback for the New England Patriots. Heck yeah! I hope he gets that. Get that ring, Cody. Patriots Get found that ring. Patriots found the next guy to throw five yard passes to. I good good for them. Good for them. Cody Kessler as a Cleveland Brown, 0 for eight in that magical 2016 season that they went one for five. Uh, Heck yeah. 65 percent completion rating, six touchdowns, two interceptions. Look at that. Ooh. Uh, what I a think, gem! I think his leading receiver that year was Terrell Pryor. Um. <laughs> yeah, it probably was. No, yeah, it was. It was. Let's and that was that. the year we had Pryor play like half of a game at quarterback because everyone was hurt. Uh huh. Yeah, that was. Yeah, the quarterbacks. Uh, the quarterbacks for that game, <laughs> or for that season. There was five of them. You wanted to try and name Matt. them all. What? All right. What's the Two, year? 2016. 2016. That's RG three. Cody Kessler. Terrell Pryor. Uh, besides, Hogan, besides Terrell Pryor. Kevin Hogan? Kevin Hogan. 2016. Was RG3 a thing? RG3 was the thing. Is there one more? There is one more. And I remember watching this guy make his Browns debut. It was against the New England Patriots. Charlie Whitehurst was a quarterback for Charlie, a Charlie! <laughs> oh my god! No! We yep. signed Charlie Whitehurst. We, we extended Charlie. that man's career. Mm-hmm. Holy frick! Okay, all right. You take. You, I got. I, I take I Cody Kessler. All right. You know what? I'm just gonna take this because it looks cute when you look at my roster. So I already got Josh. Why not take Luke McCown? All right. So got gun. You got a. You got a monopoly on the on the McCowns. Yeah. Uh, I would say the best quarterback from the 2004 draft, better than Eli Manning, Ben Roethlisberger, and Phillip Rivers. I think that's fair. <laughs> I think that's fair. He's 0-4 with the Browns. Four touchdowns, seven interceptions. That's almost respectable. 608 yards. He completed less than 50% of his passes. Uh, and after one of his starts in Buffalo, interim coach Terry Robisky admitted it was men against boys when it came to McCown facing the Bills. Hmm. I want to thank this ESPN article for ranking every single Brown and giving me these little stats and these little little factoids. So, thank you so much. Luke McCown is my 11th quarterback. So, with my next pick, I am going to pick uh, the second coming of Jesus. Ooh, he's taken. This I don't is, know who he's taken. This is a man who the myth. made his debut with the Cleveland Browns against the Baltimore Ravens in which the Ravens – uh, blocked a field goal and ran it yes! for the game when he okay. touched down. He actually played very well uh, yeah. in that game. Austin Davis. Uh, Austin I remember Davis. I remember seeing videos of Austin Davis. He was like a trick mm-hmm. shot quarterback. He was like throwing yeah. balls at the at the field goal posts. He then went uh-huh. 0 for 2 after that against the Bengals and the Steelers. Uh, yes. A career with the Browns, 547 yards, one touchdown, three interceptions. Um but for a half almost sixty percent completion percentage, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, almost sixty percent. Uh, and that <laughs> that Baltimore game, he went seven for ten, seventy-seven yards, and one touchdown. Ooh, ooh, almost that's one hot. for them. So I'm picking Austin Davis, the second coming of Jesus. All right, Jesus that's... Christ, we are just getting into the dreads right now. All right, I'm doing it. No. I'll take Ma- I'll okay. take Manziel. All right, Jesus, man. Here's, here's Johnny. Uh, God. All right. He had seven touchdowns, seven interceptions, and about 6,200 fumbles. Uh, two and six as a Browns starter. Uh, he pushed Hoyer out. Uh, 
57% completion percentage. He's not good, okay? He shouldn't be in the NFL. I don't care if he's drug-free. Uh, this dude... Have you even seen Johnny Manziel? He doesn't look like he could survive a college football game anymore. No, he doesn't. Uh, he, couldn't uh, survive a, he couldn't survive a Canadian football league. Was there a story of him in a bar with a mustache on? Oh, yeah. You don't remember that? He went down to Vegas. Yeah. He went down to Vegas, yes. bought a wig and mustache uh, so he wouldn't yeah. be seen. Yep. That, That is my 12th quarterback. Billy Vegas, baby. Billy Vegas. Um, I don't. I don't know what's going on. All right, so with my next pick, um, I'm going Holy to pick cow. a man that I still have a lot of faith in, even though nobody else does, Sean Kaiser. Get him out of here. I refuse to take him. So, yeah, kick rocks to Sean. I, I I just feel so bad for him because he was just put in a garbage spot. He was set up to fail. I, I'm, I'm honestly – I. I think a huge part of why he's just so bad now is because of that season. It, you have to admit, like, he, he was put in a horrible spot. Yes, he was. He shouldn't have been in the in the game at all. And, like, and he, he had, he had, once he was in, they shouldn't have taken him out. Exactly. And he had flashes of, like, okay, this guy can make some throws and everything. Um, yeah. It, but, like, Hugh Jackson completely ruined that guy's deep, uh, con- yeah. confidence and just – and his decision making. And his decision making. When he was on the Packers, holy cow, he almost blew a game against the Bears, and then he played uh, Week 17 against the Lions, and we got destroyed. Is that the same year that, uh, or is that the same game where Khalil Mack literally like carried Deshaun Kaiser to the end zone? Pretty much. That's a yeah. hilarious highlight. <laughs> Came back and won, but yeah, Deshaun Kaiser, I don't, I don't like you, and he's I... off the team now. So you know what? Good luck, Deshaun. I hope. I hope Hugh Jackson didn't ruin you too bad. I hope someone gives you another chance. Is he, I think try, he, try the XFL out. Try the that. Raiders right now. Is he? What? Do they have Peterman still too? Were they carrying mm-hmm. Trace McSorley, Deshaun Kaiser, and Nathan Peterman? Mm-hmm. John Gruden, folks. He is earning that contract. I'll tell you what, man. Uh, <laughs> with my next – or no, it's your pick. No, it's my pick, bro. Frick, who do I take? Jesus Christ. Uh, you know what? They're all bad, so I might as well add another Super Bowl ring to my roster. Doug Peterson, folks! Okay, that's fair. Doug I... Peterson. Uh, he won a Super Bowl as a coach. Philly special, dude. Uh, let's see. He's 1-7 as a starter. He's two touchdowns, eight interceptions, 1,000 yards passing. Uh... He joined the Browns after Ty Detmore tore his uh, Achilles in preseason and started after Tim Couch broke his thumb in practice. Doug Peterson. All right. Well, let's let's keep the trend of um, one of um, guys who barely played on the Browns, and I guess I'll pick Bruce Gradkowski. I guess. Bruce uh, Gradkowski, he, the all-time greatest Madden free agent to quarterback to pick up. He really was. Um, yeah. <laughs> I got nothing good to say about him. <laughs> I don't even remember him being a Brown. All right, just in time for me to take my 14th quarterback. Are you freaking ready for this? Not really. All right, I'm just going to go with it. Ty Detmer. <sighs> yeah. Okay, sure. Ty, um, oh, and 2 He has – oh, oh, look at this. Four touchdowns, two interceptions. That's – even though he only completed 51% of his passes and only had 500 yards passing, I'm taking Ty Detmer. Freaking. I got. Say about Ty Detmer. He he existed. All right. I guess I'll take Spurgeon Win next. Uh... Taking Spurgeon Win. Oh, my God. Thank God. I didn't want to take him. 1 0 uh, with the Browns. Um. You know, 40% completion rating, 22 for 54, interception, no touchdowns. And one, not one or no. Oh, and one, you're right. Jesus. All right. Please. Over Tom Brady. What's that? We took Spurgeon win over Tom Brady. Uh, I believe he was taking the same round. 20% of his passes as a Cleveland Brown. I don't know who else there is. We got two left. 
I'm, I'm refusing to take Jake DeLome. So thank God. I'll take Ken Dorsey. I'm. I was refusing to take Ken Dorsey. <laughs> Ken Dorsey, he shares the last name of our current GM. Ken Dorsey, everyone. What, Let me, what, what do I? He's zero and three. He has zero touchdowns, seven interceptions, twenty-six completion percentage, three hundred seventy yards. But I don't want Jake Delhomme because that dude ticked me the, off. One of the greatest quarterbacks in Miami University history. Um, after wait, Trent Dilfer, Ken Dorsey was the next player I remember hating. So, I was never I, a Ken Dorsey fan. I just hate Jake DeLome more. I, I refuse to take Ken Dorsey or uh, 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 T- uh, Trent Dilford. So, the three quarterbacks I refuse to take were Jake DeLome, Spurgeon, Wynn, and Deshaun Kaiser. Okay. And All congrats. Right, and then you I have... guess I'll take Jake DeLome. He was with the Panthers for a little bit, wasn't horrible, and then he started over Colt McCoy, and then Colt McCoy was not bad enough to take the job from him. Yay. Turns out when you take away Steve Smith, Mushin Muhammad, a good defense, and uh, a really good running game with Deshaun Foster, and then D'Angelo Williams and Jonathan Stewart. Turns out Jake DeLome sucks. Mm, that's a fair take. All right, well, after just... And he also, also in a playoff game on his birthday, he threw four interceptions. It was either four or five. No, it was on his birthday. It was against the Cardinals with Kurt Warner. And he threw four or five interceptions on his birthday, and they got, and they lost to the freaking Cardinals. Well, after reliving that nightmare that I've had to go through these past twenty years. Yes. Matt, you have a fake tweet for me. Actually, I you know do. What? It's not you a fake. I gotta. I, I before you do that, I have a criminal for you. Right. So. Oh, oh, that's hot. Uh, While you do that, let's just look at my my quarterbacks for the Cleveland Browns. Brandon Whedon, Tim Couch. Derek Anderson, Josh McCown, Robert Griffin III, Colt McCoy, Jeff Garcia, Trent Dilfer, Kevin Hogan, Connor Shaw, Luke McCown, Johnny Manziel, Doug Peterson, Ty Detmer, and Ken Dorsey. That's what I had to pick. I think there's a combined zero Pro Bowls of all my picks. Ooh, we got a picture. Oh, look at this little fella. I like this guy. Let me tell you a He's little not bit a criminal. about... Um, Justin Mitchell. One second. Justin time. Mitchell. Yes, Justin Mitchell. Hi, okay. I'm looking to make friends in the ins- in the outside. In the outside. That's not grammar. Hi, I'm looking to make friends <laughs> in the outside. I'm a very nice guy with a big heart. I'm starting to get my business degree. There's my dog in the background. Oh, um, hi, Maple. Maple, hey. I'm I'm born and raised in the Bay Area. I'm currently going through an appeals process trying to get my case lowered or possibly thrown out. Family means everything to me. I'm a big lover of animals and cars. I'm a great listener. So if you're looking for a friend, you just need to vent to I'm here for you too. Hope to hear from my new friend soon. LOL. Now, let's let's look What was little, funny about that? Let's look about Jason. There was not there was that LOL was unnecessary. I'm throwing a flag on that. Let's see. He is a graduate of the Centennial Desert Institute. Uh, okay, so he didn't graduate. That's fine. Congratulations. What is this? Um, uh, he was born in 1987, and his release date is hey. 2040. 20! Ho! Oh! oh, boy. So, uh, the, the diploma is not, I'm not falling for that, all right? I'm just going to not look at the diploma. I wish that cap wasn't on because, you know, hairdos tend to tell a lot about a person. Uh, uh, he's he's 2040. That's that's a long time. I'm, I'm going to go. Dude, I, I this guy killed someone. I'm sorry. He's a murderer. He killed someone. You're going with murderer? Murder, final answer. All right. Uh, Justin Mitchell assaulted some, or no, burglary. Burglary. So, let me tell you. Let me tell Say you that word you. again, please. Bur- so, burglary. Burglary. Bur- All right, cool. So, let me tell you a little bit about Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell rested in connection with more than a dozen burglaries in Redwood City. 
Um, a Redwood City man has been arrested in connection with more than a dozen burglaries. Uh, a vehicle burglary um, it had its window shattered and a purse containing several credit cards was stolen. Um, let's see. Anything else? Uh, ter- a search turned up. He had narcotics items purchased with, a, purchased with stolen credit cards and several items stolen from other burglaries. In- including someone's diploma. <laughs> That's his diploma that he stole. <laughs> oh, that's, Let's see. More he doesn't than, look like a burglar to me. More than a dozen burglars, bur- burglaries include a number of vehicle and residential. <laughs> so we got a we got oh, a serial burglar. Burger. 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 Bur- burger. We. He... Hamburglar. Okay. okay, send me with this fake tweet. <laughs> All right, it's not a fake tweet. It's just a tweet. I want you to guess who it is, and I want to see your reaction to this tweet. Okay. Uh, I don't know how I stumbled across this tweet, but it's going to get you mad, all right? Let's see. Where is it? I'm prepared. Do you hear that? Is that your dog? <laughs> yeah, she occasionally does that. <laughs> I'm scared. Maple, come here. Hi. Mapes. Can you not do that, bro? She does that like on her first like 30 seconds of her walk, and then she's usually fine. How old is she? 11. That's not super old. No, she's been doing that since she was uh, a puppy. <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah. Well, so. All right. It's all good then. Back to the. Okay. Come here. All right. Good girl. Stop it. Frick. Where is this tweet? I, Matt, how are you not prepared? This is a professional podcast. What do you mean? I uh, had while it. we while we while we wait for Matt, I would like to show you everybody. I'm wearing the goat's uniform, Cardale Jones, and he got zero dollars of that jersey, folks. Uh, so did the NCAA because I bought it from China. Um. <laughs> oh, boom, baby! All right, I found it. I found it. Are you ready for this? This was sent on. August 15th, 2011, at 9.44 p.m. Congrats to Jim Tomey for 600th home run. Great guy. Very good player for 21 seasons. But my standards are high. Not a Hall of Famer to me. When and here's just the... another one. That was 2011. And here's one more on... Same person? July... 18th, 2011. <laughs> at 106 p.m., How do you still I despise. Count? Shut the heck up, dude. I despise using stat milestones as automatic hall qualifiers. Tommy never finished higher than fourth in MVP. One sixth, two sevenths. Not great. Same person. What, uh, what, what, what year was these? 2011, so he's probably chilling with like the Orioles or something. He's with the Indians. Oh, did, is that when he came back with the Indians? Yeah, for like five games. Yeah, I think it was with the. Did he? Did he hit his six hundredth with the Indians? No, he hit it with the Twins. I'm pretty sure. So it might sure. be the Twins. Um, wait, was it 2011? Um, yeah, these are both. It was one of those years where. You're, oh, oh my God. Um, 2011. Yeah, he's with Minnesota. Okay, yeah, so I'm pretty sure he did his six hundredth with the Indians or uh, with Minnesota so... that year, but. I'm pretty sure Jim Tomey's your favorite Indian of all time. Jim Tomey's my favorite, I baseball, these, favorite baseball player of all time. And I saw these two tweets, and I was like, this is this is beautiful. And I, what's your reaction, and who do you think this is? One, you're wrong. He is the only true <laughs> true power hitter that ever came out of the steroid era with clean. Um, mm. Him and Frey Thomas. Mm. What about Ken Griffey Jr.? Oh, yeah, Ken Griffey Jr., that's true. I don't know. Like, I feel like, so like, guys like Ken Griffey Jr. and Mike Trout, like those guys aren't power hitters. Those guys are just really good They're hitters just, that hit a yeah, bunch of home runs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jim Tomey and Frank Thomas were uh, power hitters that struck yeah. out a lot and hit a lot of home runs. But uh-huh. uh, who would say something this stupid? Cowherd would definitely <laughs> say something this stupid. I'm going to go with Cowherd because I can't think of anybody else. Or Skip. Uh, well, no, Skip doesn't care about baseball. 
It was just coward, really. Nobody on, nobody, no, no MLB personality care or media personality cares about baseball, besides Jay Crawford. Um, yeah, we're gonna go with, we're gonna go with, uh, we're gonna go with, we're gonna go with a coward. All right, so it's not Colin Coward. It's my boy. It's Skip Bayless. And let me just tell you, if you look up tweets for uh, Jim Tomey, he, he, there's one, two. Jim Tomey is not a Hall of Famer, my rule. If I say his name and you even have to think about it, not in. Mm. Want only no doubt superstars. Jim Tomey is, a no do- is not a no doubt superstar, folks. Yeah, he's got like. I'm looking at tweets right now of Tommy. Yeah, he says he's a nice guy though. Today on the first first and ten pot first and ten podcast gets heated versus Jay. I love Tommy Crawford and third down. Enjoy. Um, he does not like Jim Tommy for some reason. I didn't know this was a thing. Or he he likes him, but he doesn't think he's a a Hall of Famer. I didn't think it was even a question that Tommy was a Hall of Famer. <laughs> Charles Haley, who just got in the College Hall of Fame, belongs in Pro Football Hall of Fame. Super Bowl difference maker for the 49ers. Cowboys, five rings, in quotation marks, or in parentheses, Tommy, no rings. So he's talking about an NFL player and just immediately goes to Jim Tommy. Uh, so <laughs> I didn't know Skip Bayless hated Jim Tommy so much. What a weird player to Dude, Jim start Tommy is like Jim Tommy is like, uh, it, 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 besides Sean Casey, is known as like the nicest guy in in baseball. Uh, right. I'm gonna look up his stats. Jim Tomey. We're we're gonna see he's eighth all time in home runs. A career batting average of two seventy six as a power hitter is really good. Five time All Star, which is actually surprising. I thought he'd be more an All Star more I did times. Too, actually. Uh, he had. 97, 98, 99, 2004, and 06. And Dang. I've never suspected Tommy of steroids. Huge human, country strong, boomer bust, <laughs> led league in home runs once, K's once, walks once. Not great. Country strong. Okay, I'm cool. Sure. Everyone else was on steroids. I'm pretty sure Jim Tommy grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. Uh, yeah, Illinois. Yeah, Peoria, Illinois. Thanks, Jim. Or not, not Jim. Thanks, Thanks Skip, Skip, for your uh, for your in depth baseball analysis. It's always very welcome. This dude, holy cow, dude! Look at how many seasons he's had. Look at all his walks. That's how much of a threat he was. He was getting walked so much. Heard Scott Van Pelt say Tommy has been overlooked. Exactly. Ever heard of a no doubt first ball Hall of Famer being overlooked for twenty two seasons? I. This is. What is going? Like, and this why is, does he and, hate him so much? Who did, does, and here's another thing that I know is going to tick you off. Baseball team. He said, uh, "Skip, he's from like Oklahoma or something, or probably I don't even know who Skip roots for. He doesn't even talk baseball unless it's the home run derby or after the World Series is done." <laughs> what the heck? And he also said Derek Jeter was a no doubt first ballot Hall of Famer, and I know how much you like Derek Jeter. Stop. I think uh, you call. I think I believe you called him the most overrated baseball player of all time. He most definitely is. Derek Jeter's most overrated baseball player of all time. Folks. Fine, fine hitter, not great, not incredible, not but not bad. Oh God, now you, now you sound like Colin Cowherd. Um, the he's without a, he's a doubt, three ten, three ten batting average. That's fine. I, once again, it's not great, but not bad. If you hit only 310, you don't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, though. Uh, however, if you are statistically the worst shortstop to ever play the game, you apparently deserve to. He is. Statistically, he is the worst shortstop to ever play the game. Defensively? Are you talking defensively? Yeah, defensively. Let me look up Derek Jeter's defensive stats. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. A lot of people are going to hate you for this. That's fine. I don't care. They're all wrong. I'm, I'm putting I'm putting this clip on. What Twitter. do you think? You think Yankees fans know how to read or anything? It's all right. <laughs> they know how to read the disabled list. Uh, oh, where... Derek Jeter only had one season where he had over a hundred RBIs. Where is just just a fun little fact? Okay, fan graphs. Can I get his defense though, please? 
Uh, fielding. He had a... Can I just see, like, defensive war, please? Please, maybe? I don't know. Oh, my goodness. All right, yeah, he had a negative UZR of 66.1. He had a... Um, so that's ultimate zone rating, which means how well does he defend his zone? Um, double is that good or really bad? Or I don't know. These that is god awful. He had. So what do you think Lindor is? His UZR. I'm gonna say Lindor is probably at like a maybe like a. I don't know. That's a good question. Let me look. Lindor's UZR. Because like I don't know anything about defensive stats for baseball. I know just enough to get me by and act like I know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> Baseball fans are crazy with all these freaking stats, man. See, like, I'm crazy about it, too. But, like, when it comes to, like, the fielding stats, it's... it's... I, I don't even know where okay, to begin Okay, so Lindor, stuff. in comparison, Lindor has a 48.3 UZR. Not a negative... And Derek Jeter has a negative 60-something? Neg- negative 68. Yankees fans, what's up? How many gold gloves did Jeter win? Didn't he win a he bunch of gold five. gloves? He won five. How? <laughs> be so because bad. people only care about the name. They only, we, we, finally so they have writers that, to... we finally have writers who care about stats and everything. <laughs> ah, Jesus. I'm looking at more Skip Bayless, Jim Tommy tweets. This is incredible. <laughs> I knew you would hate this. Do you think if Derek Jeter played for any other franchise, he would be considered a Hall of Famer? No. Absolutely not. No. I mean, he has like 70.7 war or something like that. So that's nothing to scoff at. I think like 65 is kind of like the, hey, this is uh, this is where you want to be in war-wise. So I won't take that away from him. But I, he's definitely not a surefire first Hall, Hall, of, Ma- uh, Hall of Famer like he will be. Uh, yeah. Let, let me look at, what is this war? What is this war? What is this war? 72.4. Okay, so that's pretty good. Uh-huh. But he's just not a, he, he is the most overrated player of all time. I'm not afraid to say that. More overrated than... Uh, <laughs> than Harper? Jake Bowers? <laughs> you have to be rated first to be not sure. considered overrated. <laughs> not sure what Tommy does for Dodgers, except get along with great former Indians teammate Manny and pinch hit, and maybe that's valuable. Well, dude, come on. <laughs> Tommy, he joined the Dodgers in, like, 2010. Mm-hmm. Uh, 20, 2009. 2009? He's still hitting like twenty homers, maybe. I don't know. Dodgers. Jim Tomey stats. Half... Two thousand ten with the. Oh, he only played seventeen games with the Dodgers. So. Oh yeah, with the Los Angeles Doyers. Uh... And he went to the Twins for two and or one and a half years, and then and played retired. really well with the Twins. <laughs> yeah. Statline so was. Twins, 37 home runs, 99 RBIs, 266 batting average, 387 OBP. And that's when he's like 39 years old. 949 OPS. Like, come on. How do you, like, hate against the guy? With the and Twins, this is he, the had thing, highest, like... he had his highest ever OPS plus with the Twins. Like, how do you hate on that guy? And he's, how old is he? He's 40 at this point. <laughs> so, yeah, I found that. And I was like. Why does Skip hate Jim Tomey? Out of all the baseball players to talk about, I don't think Skip Bayless is, or Jim Tomey's one for hot takes. Yeah. I don't know. I, okay. All right. Well. I thought it was just agreed upon that he's just like one of the best home run hitters, but. I, I, I did I too. guess not. I, I guess not either. All right. Well, I think that calls it for an episode. It was a little bit longer, but we also had some technical difficulties that we're going to be able to cut out. So. True. Um, um, besides that, Matt, I don't know if you have anything else to say. I took Trent Dilfer as my eighth Browns quarterback. Yeah, that's a rough one. That's... And, yeah, the Browns, man. Thank God Baker Mayfield's a thing. Yes. Okay, so if you uh, would like to – if you like the show, please give us a uh, – Please give us a, a thumbs up. Um, we, we do appreciate that. Hit, hit subscribe if you'd like. Um, if you'd like to contact the show, in the upper right-hand corner there, we got the email and the Twitter for the show. Please ask us questions. Please right ask here? Us. Yep. Uh, yeah, actually. Uh, Sick. Just point straight up for you. Uh, if you would like to ask us questions, right also, up here. also post in the comments down below. Uh, we'd love to answer you guys. We love talking to you guys. Um, yeah, I will 
cyber bully every single one of you in the comments. You can you can follow us here and here uh, for my Twitter at subrony forty underscore forty five on Twitter and the Big Sale forty five on Twitch. Matt, you you have the Twitter on your right hand side uh, at Matt Mama twenty four. And, right you, and you have your YouTube on your left hand side. Uh, right here, YouTube. baby. YouTube.com slash uh, Matt Mamba. <laughs> Freaking heck, dude. <laughs> and once again, I will give another Hail, Aaron Rodgers Hail. Actually, I'll give a Tim Couch Hail Mary to give this more topical. Ooh, and Tim, Tim Couch, Couch to Quincy Morgan, baby. Tim Couch has the most Hail Marys in NFL history with two. Um, fun fact Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. If you're counting postseason, Aaron Rodgers has more than that. Uh, most NFL Hail Marys. Are you talking about just like ending a game, like game winners? Yes, that's the, that's the. Okay, so then uh, Rogers only has one because he has heck of hail marys. Yeah, so, um, that that is the that defined by the Pro Football Hall of Fame and by stats and all everything. Um, mm-hmm. There's only been 29. Oh wait, actually, there's been 28 uh, ones. Aaron Rodgers is has one. Mm-hmm. Oh, the but Lions. that's divisional playoffs. Okay, so Aaron Rodgers does have the most. But screw it, we're going to go with Tim Couch because he has two with the Browns. Uh, Boom! We'll, 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 we'll send another Tim Couch Hill Mary. If for any reason you'd like to sponsor this garbage content that we put out on a semi-regular basis, you can put your ad down below. We will even make it bigger. I will make it the whole screen, depending on how much money you give us. I do not care. Um, if you give us two dollars, if you give us two dollars, we'll put your face. The entire screen is your face. I will make every segment about you. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's that's a that's a 90 yard hail mary right there. That like, <laughs> we're on our own ten. That yes, that is on, on our own ten, and Cody Kessler is our quarterback hail mary. Yes, it's it's not good. It is not good. That's like a that's like a we're on our own ten and we go up for the Hail Mary and Kevin Hogan still does a QB option. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, besides that, Matt, I don't know if you I don't know if you have anything else you want to say. You just hit yourself in the face. Um, Shut the heck up, dude. Um, um, if you or a loved one has been diagnosed with mesothelioma, you, you you will be entitled to financial compensation. So please look it up. Get a free information packet. Call one eight hundred ninety nine. Why are you giving, this, why are you giving this PSA? You're you're just giving people sponsorships without the money. Oh frick! If you have mesothelioma, you know what? Just die. Just die. Just freaking die. die. There's nothing left for you. Die. Oh! <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm All right. sorry. Uh, I quickly, I will say, um, Matt and I came up with this kind of new concept. If at any time we don't, rec- we, like, we can't record or we just want to quickly talk about something like an emergency podcast or anything, we are going to soon right. start the Brown Show and the Mamba Show. And uh, we'll Heck still have yeah. this main podcast. Um, I don't know if we'll switch up the names or whatever, um, but we, we will have that. Um, it'll be like only like probably like 20, 30 minutes if it's like something we really want to talk about or something like that. And, uh, right. We'll, we'll start posting those out once we ever feel like something needs to be talked about. Um, those will all be, um, you, you will all be able to f- tell the difference due to, I'm starting to create custom thumbnails now uh, for all of Ooh. those. And also, if you know how to read, sorry, Yankees fans, uh, you will be able to, you'll, you'll be able to tell the difference there. So, I got nothing else besides that, Matt. I hit my face, I tip my camera over I, I got nothing dude and i threatened mesothelioma patients i brown and i took i took i took doug peterson you did take I, doug peterson it's been a day uh but i yeah i i think i think that calls it for a show um brown yeah Tom, let's the just show, end this episode deshaun kaiser uh and uh <laughs> and have a good one thanks for watching